Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Morning and welcome to Bassmaster Live. Welcome as we head to the dead center of our nine event season on the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake, a place with a lot of history. Uh, none of it having to do with the Elite Series though. So uh, it's gonna be uh, new to some people. It's gonna be very, very familiar to bass fishing fans from all over the world. Another person who's very familiar with bass fishing fans all over the world, the great Davey Height. We welcome Davey into the studio, be with us all four days. And Davey, it's kind of like we go from spring in the field to summertime with 90s and thunderstorms of the day. It's a, a different outlook this time around. Definitely a different out, outlook this time around. Uh, most of these fish being postponed, there's a few fish still spawning, but uh, the first half of our year, the first four events, we had so many people that were sight fishing. I don't think we'll see much of that today. Okay, well we will see what we will see because this is a lake which has different facets and a lot of different dimensions and different ways to get the job done. We always look for something like that. As we get ready to go, a takeoff uh, was still underway for some of our anglers. Let's take a look at Progressive Elite Series Angler of the Year and Brandon Cobb, the man on top, South Carolina, certainly uh, boosted his standings there. Three top tens this year and one top 20. You can't do a whole lot better than that. Drew Cuck, also three top tens this year. Tyler Avet, the winner of our first stop down at Lake Okeechobee. And Carl Jockinson, uh, first Australian to be this high in our uh, Angler of the Year points. All cuts made this year, plus a sixth and seventh, uh, sixth and 11th to start his season. As we say, our season is almost at the halfway point. And when we finish tomorrow, it is going to be, uh, we'll be halfway done with this season. And as uh, Ronnie Moore put it uh, before we got started here today, you better get going if you haven't put enough points on the board yet if you want to make this season a successful one. Yeah, Tommy, we had four events so far, most of them surrounding the spawn, two in Florida, two in South Carolina. But, Davey, you know at this point in the season, the fifth and sixth stops of the season, Lay Lake and Sabine River, post spawn summertime south fishing before we make our way up north. If you're a southern guy and you haven't caught them yet, you got two more events before the pressure's on for the northern swing. Yeah, Ronnie, that, every tournament is equally important, but some just seem to be like, man, this is a tournament where you really need to get it going. Some of the guys that haven't had a good start. It's going to be very interesting to watch these anglers. It's a different fishery. Lay Lake, it's a, only 12,000 acres, a long fishery. It's the Coosa River, about 45, 50 miles long. A lot of things going on early in the morning, and then we'll see the grind start. These anglers, some of them offshore, some of them fishing the bank. Yeah, from 160,000 acres to 12,000 acres. Yes. That's the culture shock we're getting today, and these guys will deal with it, absolutely, to be sure. How well will they do it? Let's ask our over and under question. Will 60 pound, the 60 pound mark be busted this time around? We got 58 the last time we were on the Coosa up a couple of uh, reservoirs up. I, I think 15 pounds a day gets you 60 pounds, Tommy, and I will say, um, I'll say we'll narrowly do that. I think I think it'll maybe get better throughout the week. They had a bunch of rain early, like that we're getting right now in Arkansas. They had that similar type of rain earlier in the week. Maybe that water level will come up, and those fish will start to stay biting a little longer into the day, Davey. So I'll say over. Davey? I'm going to say barely under. I think 58, 59. I think it's going to be right there. That's a good, a good number to, to start with, but I'm going to say just a little under. We do our fantasy sheets. We got we got to predict a weight, and I put down 58.5. So I'm right there with you, Davey Height. Well, we've got a playing field with a lot of history out here, and we will get into that as the morning wears on. Right now, let's take a look as we go down to sort of the south central Alabama here with our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. And as we say, 50 miles long, it's a real river type environment, right, Davey? It definitely is a river type environment. The, through the years when I fished Lay Lake, that's really what I consider it. You have to pay a lot of attention, Ronnie. We heard you talking about earlier about the current. Down on the lower end, Paint Creek, Waxahachie Creek, two big players every time we go to Lay Lake. Spring Creek up there about midway or so. Pay attention to the lower part of, of the lake, what they generate and the water that they're moving there. And then you move on up a little bit. Beeswack Creek, everyone that has kept up with the Bassmaster Elite Tournaments here, well, not Elite Tournaments, but Tournaments in general. This mm -hmm. is our first Elite Tournament here. Pay attention to Beeswack Creek. Then you go all the way up on that upper end, and I'm sure we'll see some anglers up there, and they always pay attention to the generation schedule. One big thing this week, we normally have maybe one or two locals on a body of water. You know, in South Carolina, we had a couple guys familiar with Murray. Patrick Walters lives right on Santee. 
We have 14 anglers from Alabama and over half of them, Tommy, would call the Coosa River home and a couple that don't call it home are on the Alabama River, some there in close vicinity. Yeah, absolutely. We always keep our eyes on the locals here and of course we have the South Carolina local leading after we exit South Carolina and then the progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. So yeah, we for good reason. Uh, we're going to be out with a, a multiple of them today all day in the camera with the two of our anglers from uh, the Coosa River area, actually three of them from the Coosa River area there. So that will be a lot of fun to watch them today. Looking at that there, Davey, the David Gaston, 28 miles from here, Straysner 27, Davis Jr., Will Davis Jr., 19 miles. Couple guys really close here, and a couple guys who have already had a great start to the season, Will Davis Jr. and David Gaston, both not leading Rookie of the Year, but man, they're right there making almost every cut this season, if not all of them. Yeah, we say this every year, but I'm, I mean it this year also, that the, the rookie field that we have this year is really, really incredible, and we're gonna see that Rookie of the Year race go right down to the last tournament. All right, well, we uh, had a chance to visit with some of our anglers, including some of those aforementioned locals here, right when takeoff was starting, uh, right before that, about 35, 40 minutes ago. Let's hear what they had to say, starting with Scott Cannabis. The whole practice, uh, first day it seemed like it was a little bit better and they've dropped the water every day. The water's actually come up overnight. We had a lot of rain north of here and that helps, but I think uh, what they do is they're filling the lake up for the, for the weekend, uh, recreational traffic on the weekends, but it was actually about six or seven inches low most of the week and today, right now, it's only about three inches low. So it's on the rise. I'm hoping those shallow fish are gonna bite. Uh, I'm gonna stay shallow. I'm gonna fish power fish the way I fish when I come here. I fish here a lot. So. So uh, looking forward to it. Just need to get a few bites and get a clue on what's going on this morning, hoping that we can put it together. So today one lay lake. Unfortunately, I got a camera in the boat, so <laughs> that's always nice. Not on any fish. Uh, fishing's really tough. This is always that funk this time of year. It uh, just catching five will be a challenge. You don't know the size of them. I mean, I could have five 12 inches, or I could you know have five two pounders, which I'd be happy with. So uh, we're gonna go out there today and just try to catch some fish and have fun with it. Getting ready to go. Day one here at Lay Lake. It's uh, excited to get out there. It's been challenging, I'm not going to lie, but you know, I've got to this point of the year, leading angler year, fishing shallow. I'm not going to change it just because I'm having a tough time shallow. I think the winning fish are still shallow. They're big ones. We're just going to do what I like to do, throw some moving baits down the bank, maybe finesse fish a little bit for some fish around brim beds, shad spawn, things like that. I'm excited to get out there. It's, it's going to be a challenging day. But I think there's potential to catch a good bag, just catching one at a time, keeping fishing whatever's in front of you, and keep the boat moving, cover a lot of water. That was a little while ago, just before takeoff. Did David Gaston say, fortunately or unfortunately, I have a camera uh, in my boat? I think today. a little bit of both. I saw a little sarcasm there. <laughs> Could have been David Gaston, who lives uh, just 30 minutes away in Sylacauga, Alabama. Let's get out to him right now. He's swimming a jig. Shoreline vegetation. See a lot of that this week, no doubt. Stay one. Say that's a way to get started, mm -hmm. David Gaston. It's no longer not on any fish, Davey. That's exactly. a good one. That is a good one for Lay Lake to start the day. It took us about three minutes to prove that these are sandbaggers that we're covering here today. <laughs> and we prove it time and time again, it seems like. Good start. He and his cameraman are bonding already. <laughs> Second by one point in our Dakota Lithium uh, Rookie of the Year race. He's had an outstanding season so far. Made all four cuts, the two down in Florida and the two in South Carolina, and yet he hasn't led Rookie of the Year yet. He's made every cut because we've had so many rookies occupy top tens. We had Brian Smith in the last one, Logan Latuso started the year, Joey Sefuentes won an event, Kelia Fujita had his time right in the hot seats. <laughs> well, from one Alabama angler to another from Montevallo, Alabama. Let's get out to Clint Davis. Number one. Very interesting to see Clint Davis fishing offshore first thing down. this morning. I mean, that's, yeah, that's where I'm throwing to him at. I was catching this in.
number one chucker to start the day. Yeah. Ten years of pro, seven years on the Bassmaster Elite Series is Clint Davis. And Take a look at some of the anglers we're with all day. We promised you a lot of Alabama. That's, that's, that is all Alabama, that four box right there. <laughs> Davey, we haven't been here for the elites. We've covered uh, six professional events counting this week, four classics and open in this elite. But we have had eight youth events, like college, high school mm -hmm. events. So I've covered Lay Lake on the water. And you know it's not that big of a body of water when I've only been there once or twice and I know exactly where Clint Davis was just based on some of the houses in the background. Like immediately you're like, I know where that's at. It is small for an elite field in four days. We'll see a lot of the same areas being fished. Got Canterbury hooked Canterbury. up. One little guy. That's a little guy. Take a look at David Gasson, uh, Scott Canterbury, these guys that are swimming a jig this morning, this shoreline vegetation. It's a very unique, uh, very fast paced, a lot of rod shaking in this area of the Coosa River when they swim. We see anglers swimming jigs from Okeechobee, mm -hmm. our first event of the year, all the way up north uh, in the New York events. I'm sure we'll see some of that, but a lot more action to swimming a jig for some reason in this area. David Gasson was really, really, mm -hmm. really shaking his rod a lot. Nothing big. That's right. Scott Canterbury, our 2019 Progressive Angler of the Year. Good to see Scott back on the right track. Fared well in the Bassmaster Classic just a couple weeks ago. After missing the Classic for a couple of years, you win Angler of the Year and then you miss some Classics. It's kind of crazy to yeah, see the two ends of the spectrum, but he's back on track. It's Clint Davis has hooked up with number two possibly. 12 inch length limit on these all bass here. I think I got to keep him. Be still, Dave. <laughs> His mouth's too small. I hate to start with that. I hate to even put him in the live well, honestly. 13 inch spotted bass. 13 inch spotted bass can go a long way on lay legs sometimes. Oh, yeah, we, we got to redefine big and small. Yes, and all it's all relative, we're, isn't it, Tom? We're all, we're all uh, dialed into a, a different world here as we, as we enter into our fifth stop of the year, sixth stop of the year. A lot of the people watching this morning, though, is like, this is reality. This looks like the place I fish every Saturday versus the way the last few tournaments have looked like Murray and Santee Cooper Lakes. It's phenomenal. TH Marine Weather Watch. It's uh, warm, warm, warm. We'll be in the uh, low 80s uh, first couple of days. Get higher and higher for Saturday and Sunday. 90, 90 degrees plus on Saturday. Scattered storms, very summertime-like weather, you know, pop-up storms and light winds. They really hadn't had too many 80 to 90 degree days lately to really make these fish act like it's past spring and into summer. And so with this is like the first real warm, warm week we've had for them. And you have indeed gotten those storms each afternoon, it seems like for the Elite Series field. And we're gonna have some storms 1 p.m. today and in the afternoon Friday. But then this, but then Saturday and Sunday, it looks like maybe the rain will hold Just off and stay away. get back straight. Those lows each night in the mid to upper 60s, so that, that changes things, mm -hmm. definitely. More and more of these fish will be moving offshore. One Glad thing, to see the water's up, though, today. That's what I was about to say, was some guys, you know, you might not want to keep a 13-inch spotted bass, Tommy, but when they left practice yesterday, the water was, you know, half a foot lower than it is, and now that it's on the rise, you don't know if it's going to be as tough as it was maybe on right. the practice I mean, day yeah, or if it's getting better. That was the number see, one reason cited for the t among the shallow water yeah. guys. Yeah. You, need to, you need to bring in five and get off to, once you get five, you're good to go. Jason Christie, first guy to three fish. He took the lead, Carl Jockison, who's got a four pounder, just leapfrogged him. One of your shad's still up there, following my chatterbait every cast. 
Bueno, ahí que hacen nada. Probably full. Mm. Talking about the weights being less than the last few tournaments, but this is a good tournament to watch and to cover and see how these anglers deal with uh, the fishing being yeah. real, always, you know, so yeah. to speak. I always enjoyed and, and had quite a bit of success in the month of May with a lot of different things going on. Some people call it junk fishing. I call it, you know, you just got to do a lot of different types of fishing and fish a little offshore, fish a little shallow and, and some in between. It's, uh, it's an interesting time to watch these anglers. There'll be a, a shake up on the angler year uh, board, I think, this week. Be some guys that... Yeah, you know, these spots really like to set up, up on these down. current scenes when they're generating power and they move around. You just got to figure out exactly where they're at every morning. That's probably a striper, I think. Or is it? It may be a bass. I think it's a stripe. No, it's a spot. When they got this trolling motor spot lock, you're pulling the current and the fish, so it's a little bit of a challenge. Skunk is out of the boat. Let's catch another one. Go Alabama spotted bass. What you call those Alabama bass now? Haven't they renamed them, Ryan? Huh. Something like that. Yeah, obviously its roots come from spotted bass, but Alabama bass, Coosa River bass, they're one of those places that you got to go and fish for them and catch them just to say you've done it because it's, it's something that people kind of, uh -huh. I guess, cherish when you get to this part of the country. But they go back many years when they were testing with the California spotted bass and they brought them in Auburn. I know Auburn was big in, mm. in figuring oh. all that out, and now they've develop their own Boy, don't insane lose your bounce. Species. You will be swimming in it right here in a hurry. Yeah, when I started fishing the Bassmaster Trail in the early 90s, I had never seen or caught Two a pounds. spot of bass. You know, now really? they're in the Carolinas and um, oh, yeah. all of our lakes, basically. It's the only way I got limits every day I fished in, <laughs> in North Carolina, it was because of spot of bass. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like uh, you know, Norman had some spot of bass before you know, Murray and Heart one of those places it seemed, but Alabama spotted bass been around a long time. Hooked up again. Keeper. He about a pound. He ain't much to him. He's been caught several times. This fool goes. There's a school of them right there. Ain't the right one, but maybe we'll get to five and then we'll we we'll just gotta keep moving around until we get the right ones. Interesting watching Matt Heron. He's just it's a soft plastic jerk bait of some some type. Don't know yet exactly which brand, but he's just throwing that bait out in the current and letting it drift down. Mm -hmm. 14th year competing in the Elite Series for Matt Heron. So let's move from Matt close to the Logan Martin Dam there. Take ourselves back down to where we started catching up with anglers this morning. And find in his first year with the Bassmaster Elite Series, David Gaston. We've 
had two bites this morning, one a three and a half and some change probably, somewhere around in there. And had a little one just nip it. It's really tough. It's just, shad spawn's just about over with by the time we're blasting off. So I was trying to pick up a, pick up one real quick. I hope that's a, that's, thought I had a bass chasing me. It's one of the most lovely gar. time of year is really tough on Lay Lake. I mean, we're just in that lull of was really good. It's about to be really good. Right now, it's just terrible. So just catching a limit, you didn't do too bad, usually. Good view of what they're fishing. A lot of shoreline vegetation. There's yeah. always some fish up there. A little more water up there is reported early this morning by Scott Canterbury before they took off. So possibly the outlook for the shallow water anglers is good. Can't wait to see what Carl Jockamson is doing. He's got three keepers in the boat. Getting close to eight pounds. Jason Christie, former world champion, former Bassmaster Classic champion. 22. Second place and David Gaston right there. We have watched him land a couple of fish this morning. Taku Ito and Brandon Polnick rounding out our top five. The Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. My name is Will Davis Jr. I'm a Elite Series rookie, um, where it's top number five at Lay Lake. During the shad spawn, um, I like throwing a Spro Popping Frog white, and then I like throwing a Davis Beast swim jig with a fighting frog on it. And then after that, I like fishing brush piles and ledges with a uh, Davis Shaky Worm. Um, and that's also a little wheel shaky head, 3 sixteenths, and that's my favorite color on uh, the Coosa River. Davis, who lives uh, like David Gaston, just over in Sylacauga, a few, a few minutes down the road here. He's uh, doing very well this season, as reflected by our Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Rookie of the Year. Watch Brian Smith of California in the first place there, and Will Davis in third place. Will, all three of four cuts made so far this year. A top 20 finish to start off his season down at uh, the 14th, as a matter of fact, at Okeechobee. And he led day one at Lake Seminole. He's, he's shown signs of it. When you win the Bass Nation, we've seen that could be a recipe success for Elite Series titles for a long career. Brandon Polling, Mike Iaconelli, Paul Mueller, guys like that have all succeeded for the nation. Fish and industry family, to be sure, and uh, should be very at home here. Let's just uh, go ahead and make it complete. Get out to Will Davis right now. I got full. A little old beaner. He ain't much, but we'll take him right now. I thought he was old Mr. Big for a second. Again, look at how much they work the rod. Swimming a jig here on the Coosa River. I thought he was big. He sounded big.
Get them on top of the water, you keep them coming and keep them on top. Don't let them go back down, they'll mm -hmm. often get off. <laughs> Large mouth. Large mouth puts them on the board. Yeah, it's been going pretty good. Uh, I didn't have a good tournament last last time, but uh, it's uh, it's going pretty good. You know, I just gotta keep the wheels on and uh, continue uh, catching them because them guys they they show no mercy. So this tournament's setting up pretty good for me. Um, they're kind of acting real finicky this morning. I guess already full of bait and or shad, I ain't wanting to hold on too good. We about to make a move to go catch some of the big spotted bass here in just a second. I'm just try to see if I catch me a big, uh, big large mouth before I done that. Catch a few of the spotted bass on the Coosa River up in this shallow vegetation, but mainly large mouth. What he's saying, going to try Throwing to catch a few spotted ounce, bass, Davis, probably uh, go offshore like we saw Plant Davis earlier. Beast, it's a new swim jig. It's braid resistant. And you ain't got to worry about it straightening out when one grabs it. A couple guys were excited to have a camera like we heard from David Gaston, but they're also not excited to have a camera because you're either not on them or you're on them so good you don't want to reveal the juice on your home pond. And uh, with seven anglers hailing from Alabama and calling the Coosa River home, you get to kind of ask them who their eyes on. And when a lot of them point to Will Davis and say, well, Will takes our money here so before he was on the Elite Series. So now I just hope he doesn't take my money here this week because it's a lot more money. And so uh, Will wanted to watch. David Gaston, um, and you got to remember this, Davey, you know this, when you traveled from Lake Murray, Santee Cooper, and you were fishing the Elite Series, you didn't get to fish at home as much. You've got a couple fresh guys from the Coosa River that have been on these bodies of water a lot more frequently over the last few years Clark. to know what to do compared to some other, like the veterans that have been on the tour. Like a Matt Herring. Yep. Yeah, but you're exactly right. Um, certainly, I fished let my first few years fishing Professionally on a Bassmaster Tournament Trail, I fished less on Lake Murray where I grew up mm -hmm. than I had since I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And you'd go back and fish a few of those tournaments and they'd say, oh, you shouldn't be fishing, you're a pro now. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even get to fish here much anymore. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're putting brush out, Johnny. I'm not doing anything. Right here in the middle on the flat. We well, yeah, obviously have a camera with Brandon Cobb. He's leading. Angler of the year, but this is his style too. He loves to just fish shallow any time yeah. of the year. So it's great to see him catch some fish. Especially yeah. the shad spawn. He seems to always, it's something that he is well versed at running. Ambassador Gar. Gar. Oh, we ain't Definitely going. Gar. We have 19 we current elites. Fish for, real, for a big bite too much longer, we're going to cut out and try to go catch us a limit somewhere. It would be hard to hook one over there, wouldn't it? See all this as aerial views, you see all this vegetation. It's a great way to learn Lay Lake if you've never been there. Because there's so much shallow this vegetation, even in Clat when really we had a classic there in the you know in the nineties, this shallow vegetation kind of in grass. August. Uh, it's not just because of shad spawn. There's always some largemouth shallow on Lay Lake because like of this, so much shallow vegetation. It. Whether it's uh, May it's or everywhere, so August. Like it. Can't mess them up that bad. Nineteen elites fishing this week fished the 2020 Open in December. 
Gaston was last among <laughs> these yeah. 19. He was 146th place. But of course, it was December. Yeah, he's still, a changed man too. That's yeah. You know, that's he's an elite pro now. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> KJ Queen was our top elite finisher in that 2020 Open at 10th place. Great shot there of that vegetation David was talking about. Let's get back out offshore with Clint Davis. Is he hooked up right when it hit the water? Looked like I it. I don't even think he. Yeah. Moved the bait before he was hooked up. In here, Jim. We gotta have five of y'all. Baby spot. Ah, 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 ah. You good at pulling hooks out? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Look at the shad in his mouth. Golly. He got fired up over there. He wouldn't ever coming off. Uh, Big thanks to Luke Palmer for changing my trouble hooks out for me last night. He's sitting there watching me rig 400 rods. Like, Luke, why are you sitting there doing nothing, buddy? Why don't you put some trouble hooks on for me? Well, he's got free rent at the house this week, so he's got to be worth something. Speaking of free rent, David, do you have anybody hanging out with you in 96 South Carolina for the Elite Series event? Come and pitch a tent and hang out? I did not in 96. I had a few hang out. I mean. Murray and uh, it's Ante Cooper. <laughs> Let's get back out to Will Davis. Probably three and a half. Good one here. There you yes, go, sir. boy. That's what we want right there. Oh, yeah. I choked it. <laughs> when you get to know these anglers, he's a rookie, but I've I've been around him enough to know you can just see I there's a different there's it, a man. different vibe with Will Davis Jr. this morning. He he's Feeling a little extra pressure being at his home lake. That's great to see. You can yeah. just see it in his in his demeanor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right there, shaking a little. That's great, Thank though. That's Lord. great to Thank see. You, Lord. you get that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got it. Just keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. More, please. That's why I try to do this. Why I can catch a big one. Make a young man breathe hard. Yeah. I seen her run out there and just, I was like, Shh. They run right at you, this, you know, on that swim jig, dude. And I'm throwing on an eight to one. I can't even freaking tie my bait, dude. See the shad flicking right off the mm -hmm. front of his boat there, just. That right there is for the goat. <laughs> Greatest of all times, Chris Landers. He texted me last night, see, so he said, uh, hey look tomorrow, you catch a big one. Tell him the goat, uh, cause you caught that one for the goat. <laughs> That's uh. 
That's probably the worst fish landing ever. But I, hey, when they got it, I don't play with them. Bring them on in. in the boat, bro. My four Davis. pounder lifted Will Davis all the way up into fourth place right there, and obviously very excited about it. Let's get back over to our leader, impressive angler of the year points, Brandon Cobb. Yeah, not like you're gonna see anything cool happen. <laughs> there he is. That's not a big one either. He might be a keeper, but I don't think he is. <laughs> Barely got him. I don't think he's gonna make it. We'll check and see, but. <laughs> it's a 12 incher. We had not got to weigh in 12 inches in so long that <laughs> he looks so little. <laughs> That's a 12 incher, but he looks so little. <laughs> God, I didn't think that was gonna be a keeper. I don't even want to put a cold tag on him. It's going to drown him. <laughs> it's going to toss him in there without a cold tag. That's what happens when you're angler of the year and you've had three top tens and one top 20. You had not caught many small fish this year. Uh, yeah, you're, you're just coming from Santee Cooper where, you know, <laughs> just as likely to catch a 7.9 well, or something. Got 10 ounces. 10 those ounces count. you put that in as. <laughs> those count and could be, as Davey pointed out, very important at the end of it all, but we are a long way from the end of it all right now. 104 anglers out there, full field fishing today and tomorrow, and Australia's Carl Jockinson on top with just under eight pounds. Jason Christie's been a little quiet lately. About time for Jason Christie to, you know, start to setting off some fireworks out there. Caleb Summerall, Will Davis, Gary Klaus moving up into our top five. We will be right back to Lay Lake. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Well, beautiful place, Lay Lake here. About half of our field, more than half of our field now on the board. Some of them focusing like these birds right here on the uh, shallow vegetation. Others working with current in mind. Current always a player here at Lay Lake. And speaking of current, let's get to uh, Ronnie Moore. has got something on current dialed up for us at the Dakota Lithium School of Screen of Knowledge or I, School of I'm going to take you to school time. That was yeah. a perfect segue talking about the current at Logan Martin or Logan Martin and Lay Lake on the Coosa River and how we determine that. If you're not familiar with a lock and dam system with the generation schedules, things like that, I'm going to try to give some insight on how we manage that at Lay Lake. You look at the map here and this is the bottom where the lay dam is. Is, but at the top where the water comes into Lay Lake is the Logan Martin Dam. And when we look at the generation schedule and you want to see there's a Smart Lakes app, you can look online and see the different uh, how much current flow, the schedule of how many generators they're going to run. Coming out of Logan Martin, they have three possible generators up where we saw Matt Heron fishing. At the top of the lake, there's three generators, but they're much bigger than the six generators down at the Lay Lake Dam. Their max capacity per generator is more at the Logan Martin Dam. So if you look and see, oh, each dam is running one generator or each dam is running this amount of current. It doesn't necessarily depend or it depends on how much flow they are putting out of there. We see one generator coming out of Logan Martin currently right now about 10,500 CFS, all the cubic feet per second. Then we go down to the bottom of Lay Lake where they're running two generators, more generators running, but 10,700 cubic feet per second. So about the same amount of water coming in and out of the system. Davey Height, you know this when you look at Beeswax Creek at the takeoff, it's probably gonna take about two hours or so from that 10,000 cubic feet, which is probably half of what you'd like. 20,000 is really moving water. It takes about two hours to get down to Beeswax and then the Lay Lake, what they're sucking out into uh, Mitchell and the other lakes, 10,000, it's probably not affecting the mid lake either. So that mid lake portion, you're not dealing with current, upper end, lower end, you can have that different changes with the current generation. All of our seven impoundments on the Coosa River came online at different times in the 20th yeah. century. So the equipment is going to vary naturally. I and think you, you said get those differences. Lay was the 1914, oldest? one of the oldest wow. uh, man-made, big man-made dams in this country. That's amazing. I didn't realize it was that old. I knew it was older, but yeah. geez, 1914. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like an actual keeper. 
Yeah, like, oh, big one. Oh, big one. Oh, he hit me. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> I don't even know why I'm measuring him. He's like, he's a giant compared to those others. One, one. See this, so, like I mentioned, you'll see anglers running no, top for sure, mixing it up after the shad spawn deal early in the morning, then <laughs> picking up other rods, other baits, and getting some bites. I mean, I'm gonna sit here and keep catching them until they quit biting because it's fun. To give perspective of uh, and I know there was one better one up there. Tommy. That first one was not. That was Babe Ruth's rookie year there you in go. baseball. Oh, I was wow. going to make a joke about Such and how that was he was covering the St. Louis Cardinals back in the day, but I don't even know if they were the Cardinals back then. You might not. <laughs> St. Louis Browns. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't catch one. What happened? I need a fly rod for these. I don't know what's going on in this grass clump, but it's kind of weird. And they're all tiny. Oh man, worm down. At least I'm hooking them all good to where. Keep her all day long. 13 inch, biggin. <laughs> biggin. Four fish. Four fish the size of one. Until you get five, you always think, you know, just be thankful for a keeper. But my I'm story with these uh, up for pictures. It's embarrassing. not having my limit field uh, on this lake, it makes you, yeah, I can't yeah, help but right. say, Legend, don't make fun legendary. of that 13 incher. Don't that make fun. The first one that blew up in that grass clump. One day in that classic, I weighed in four, and a 13 incher would have been. Oh. Gold. Maybe I weed out all these. Could happen here. Making the cut, I'm sure there's going to be some people that missed a cut. Yeah. Because they didn't have a limit. Uh, Nine the, keepers on their card. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Ah, he ate my worm off. <laughs> God may fool around and put a limit in the boat real quick here. He's kind of on his way right there. Not the size he wants, obviously. He's uh, made that pretty clear. Go back up to the dam and Matt Heron. Well, he is a long way away from Brandon Cobb, mm -hmm. isn't he? They're sitting right there in that scene, but it's Spotted bass there for Matt Heron. No real big ones yet, but they're, they look different than the ones we've seen coming from down the lake. I can't remember what Scott Canterbury exactly said in the Bassmaster podcast with Kyle and I earlier this week, but he mentioned that I think one of the last big tournaments he fished on Lay Lake, local wise, Matt Heron was in it and weighed like the biggest bag that he had seen in a long time at Lay. I don't know when it was, but he just mentioned that Matt may be from Logan Martin or a little north of here, but he knows Lay just as good as others in the little secret. Mm -hmm. Even when the water's not on fully and just a little bit of current. Well, Brandon Cobb has found him a productive clump of Man. vegetation on Lay Lake. Good one here. That may be the same fish. He's not that big, but a lot bigger than those other ones. A little bit better. Two and a half, maybe. Yeah. All, literally, literally all of them. Look at it, it's like sardines running around in there. 
That is a limit, right? I'm just making sure they all. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. That's your bait well. <laughs> My bait well. I'm just gonna wacky rig one of them here in a minute. I, that might have been the same fish. I think it was. I caught it by Sal Lawson. I thought it was like a two and a half. Remember how I said KJ Queen was the best returner from that open? He's just taking the lead. All five of his fish came in at once. He's got about eight pounds, though. Yeah, oh, wow. Mm. Feels like an all night Friday night. Right First to the limit. I don't feel bad about losing him now because I think I got him. Just had to get it back on them where they were at. Just had to get back on them where they were at. I couldn't quite get lined up on them this morning. That might be a little better one there. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a little better one there. I'll put it on that. Come here. We can do that about three or four more times and we'll be out of here. Good, solid spotted bass. Thank mm -hmm. you. This take on boat, man. I mean, this is like, party. huh? Party. This is like, hang on to your hat, Fred. God. I'm telling you, this is like an all night Saturday night kind of thing here, boy. They're sitting right. I just never got on it right this morning. Fourth fish to give Matt Hare in the lead. It's funny how they'll sit in one little crease. It's kind of like the cypress trees at Santee. You never throw past the cypress tree. Oh, yeah. You always throw to your side. I mean, I've got five or six places like this now. Is this a one on one tournament? Like it's just Matt Heron and Brandon Cox. <laughs> Matt, hey, I'm loving it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'll watch this all morning. <laughs> all weekend. <laughs> promise you. Got a little battle. <laughs> we'll get rid of a little bit. Not that he's very big either, but. 12 in there and replace a 10. <laughs> It's the greatest clump of grass I've ever fished. I mean, it's called a limit out of that one, one small yeah, clump of grass. That, Slow start for this morning. He didn't catch anything with the moving baits <laughs> around the shad spawn. <laughs> when they're all that size, you just. Man, ate my worm, too. Got a limit of six pounds, six Where ounces. Where is Papa Grass ever? I think he's probably <laughs> sandbagging a little bit. It's he's a solid it, yeah. seven pounds. Yeah, <laughs> at least six, six, twelve in the well. <laughs> Over under on seven for lunch, guys. He's, what do y'all say? Yeah. And it is, we'll give it one minute. He might call it in just one a foot second. Ten inches deep. <laughs> by the way. And what's weird is they seem to only want the wacky worm, isn't it? You had to know, Brandon Cobb. Like lead, I said, the but momentum and the that he has this season is great, but this is right up his alley, fishing shallow. Uh, Mixing it up, to, doing uh, different things. On a buzz bait or a wacky yeah, bait. Yeah, you, I guarantee you we'll see him throwing the middle bait. of it. If he throws a buzz bait in the Tennessee Probably. River in the classic, Before when it's cold and muddy and not conducive, you definitely going to see it this week, hopefully. Back up to Clint Davis. Clint from Montevallo, Alabama. Alumni of the University of Montevallo where he founded the Bass Club. Yeah, which won Team of the Year for a college. Yeah. Just wrapped it up. They had a Red River event down in one of the lower pools. They won multiple college events this year. I think they won the Cherokee Lake event and the James River. Um, I don't want to be wrong, but I think they won two of the four regionals. Wow. So Montevallo is on the rise. One yeah. of the teams that sends 97 boats to each tournament. They've got a lot, a yeah. lot of competitors there that fish for them. And you're looking at the godfather right there. That's incredible. I did not know he started the tournament. Yeah, yeah. 
What are you saying? You didn't think he went to college, Dave? I'm just amazed at Tommy's, <laughs> Tommy's knowledge of just everything from geography yeah. to who started the yeah, college team. Uh, it has something to do with furiously looking up stuff right before a tournament starts. It's not like any deep embedded knowledge. Matt Heron on top. Last one went in another two and a half pounder. He's looking good right now because he's got him located. So KJ Queen also popping up all at once. The top of our leaderboard for a short period of time. Carl Jockamson hanging in there. Kobe Krieger said he told us before the tournament. There's fish in here somewhere and somebody's going to find them. He's found some of them. We've got plenty more to come early on day one. Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is a giant bass! All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Yossi gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Fifth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, but there is a lot of history here. The Elites have never been here, but uh, we've had four classics here, and there's the one from 1996. And George Cochran only won it by one pound, Davey Ide, against, <laughs> well, let's see, that was you. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> it certainly was. That's why I say, man, don't make fun of those 13 inch spotted yes, bass. Yeah, absolutely. 2002, we came here again, and it was Jay Ellis with a 10-pound lead to start the final day and didn't catch a fish until they started generating that water. It looked like he was on Matt Heron's hole right I there. I think he was. <laughs> I think he may well have been. Also, we two, 2007 for a classic. Got some stupid tube action with Terry McWilliams. Oh, one yeah. The, one of the nation yeah. guys. <laughs> Had a huge performance, I think, top four in that classic. Big-time classic. Mike Iaconelli also played big in that one as well. Canelli. 2010, he was also a factor when it was that ultra cold. Everybody, if you were somebody, oh, you were in beeswax green. Yes, yes. <laughs> we had a, sh a shad kill on that one in the mornings That's early on, not a shad spawn for sure, exactly complicating that. the fishing. Big battle in beeswax creek with Van Dam and Creek. No one either. We're going. That was a fish right there. Come here. Treated you bad, didn't I, boy? Treated you bad. Another two and three quarter. I need to get about two more like this and and we're vapor. I'm going large by fishing. Thank you. Yep, number five. Did he say wheel vapor? Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the new one on me. Yeah. I'm not ready for him to go largemouth fishing yet. I kind of <laughs> like sitting him, you know, that's the first guy to nine pounds. Limit in his boat, Matt Heron. I, I don't want to say what size line that is just yet, but that's, that's gamma, that's some stout stuff. If you knew what size it was and what I'm doing with it, you'd go, ah, he's nuts. God, what? Freaking Scoring by Will Davis, Jr. Oh, there you go. I guess we ain't on live no more. Got it. Freaking biggins up here, boy. You see them biggins? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, come on. When you were in a hurry, that 15 seconds to unhook it seems like an eternity when you're trying to get it. Oh she ain't spawned yet. All right. I was about to mention those fish are probably pre-spawned uh, on the Coosa River this time of the year. Some of those bigger spotted bass that live out on the deeper water of the river itself, the main lake, so to speak, spawn on these <laughs> flat points and you catch them really, really well on uh, a walking bait like that. They're just so aggressive when they're on the bed. Another look at that bite. Mm. Yeah, aggressive. That's a great bite, too. Speaking of 96 and the Coosa River, we were on Neely Henry, uh, the last regular season tournament of the season. It was mid May. I won that event, and every the first three days I caught a lemon in the mornings on top water, just like that, pre-spawn spotted bass, and they were some, they were some of the best explosions on my bait oh, really? that I yeah. can ever remember top water. They're just so aggressive. Oh God! Look at that one. He'll bite it again, dude. He got it the second we time. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Think that be Lord now. Nice spot. Skinny. That was a big one that first got it, though. Oh, come on. Number uh, five. Mentioned 96, Bernie Schultz was in that classic, was 24th. He's just taking the lead in this event. Oh, wow. <laughs> what year is this? I mean, we got Matt Herring, Bernie Schultz, Will Davis Jr., David Gasson. I mean, it said it'd be a lot of diversity this yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. Carl yeah. Drocker. We got some yeah. Yeah. Pippen just popped into our top three. He's somebody who needs it. He's obviously going to try to make some hay in the final three northern events, but you don't want to just tank the first six mm. southern largemouth events. And a guy like Jason Christie, we saw him in the top ten. Kind of dangerous if he gets out of here with a good one. The next two stops on the elite schedule are places that he has victories on. So he's kind of hoping that the mid to end of the season is generous to him. Will Davis put himself in the top ah. four. That one. What's that? This old Kobe's done been watching the show. We gonna Probably fixing to take us down. And we fixing to move. But that's all right. We'll give them a raisin here in a little while. It's aggravating to know those fish are sitting there and there's no telling how many's there. And you can't get them to bite. That's literally a school of bass sitting there. Excuse me. So we asked Scott Canterbury, he's one of the guys who's local to the Coosa River. He may be a couple lakes up, more of a Neely Henry or Logan Martin guy, but knows Lay pretty well. And we said, rate this time of the year. May is great for fishing, but it is postponed. He said, out of 10, one uh, being the best time of the year, I'd probably put it closer to 10. So there might yeah, be so pleasantly I, uh, surprised with if they start to catch them a little better. A little bit. It's been slow. I mean, like in practice, like catch a few good ones, but I was only getting seven, eight bites a day. And I think I just caught like 10 off one clump of grass, which they were tiny. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, most of them were 12, 13 inches, but. It's a good sign because, like in practice, I'm just not getting that many bites. And water came up a little bit last night. I'm hoping that means some. I mean, I still think the good fish are in here. We just might have to weed through more, which is actually good. If there's more fish in here, more fun, and might have a little more chance to call up. So I don't know. I expected to. I expected to be a grind. Basically, take all day to get a limit. And I already got a limit. They're just little, but that's a lot better start than I anticipated. 
We did just see Brandon Cobb. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. He made a good cast with foot deep, foot and a half deep. Caught a bunch out of it. You only get him to bite the wacky worm, though. Couldn't give him to bite anything else. No surprise how many roosters I'm hearing in this area. This is Alabama <laughs> territory, not the Gamecocks. What I love about Lay Lake is we were talking during commercial about making the run that. up the river and you get to the Childersburg Bridge and all that stuff. On the way up there, there is a distinct place. If you've ever been at Lay Lake, you've probably taken a photo on your phone of it. There's a house with a, I mean, up on a, up on a cliff with a huge walkway down to the water. Two houses side by side. One is purple and gold LSU, and the other is Crimson Tide, and they, they've got all the logos everywhere, all over them. That's Love the Hatfields that. and McCoys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding. Good fish here, it looks like. Uh. Check your fish. Honey, the neighbors moved in and they don't like the same football team we like. I don't know if this is going to work out. Surprised one of them hasn't moved. <laughs> Not living besides such. <laughs> well, that was a fast call by Will Davis, right? Really I was. mean, he's not messing around. We hadn't have to mess with that uh, topwater hooks and so forth. Boy, they were in there. That's Just why. had two bites already on that cast. That's what we. Nation logo at the bottom of his jersey there. That's how he made it to the Elite Series. You can do so fishing your local club that's Bass Nation affiliated. You make it to the regionals. You do well there. We will have format changes for next year's Nation, but Will Davis won the Bass Regional at Smith Lake to make Pickwick, and then he wins Pickwick to make the Elite Series and make the Classic. So comes from a fishing family. Like you said, Davis Bait Company, if you know the South or you know any mm -hmm hardware baits like jigs and shaky heads, you know Davis Bait Company. And he said he's been in the industry since he was since Still he was bass. born, but really walking around the expos, being at the shows since he's five or six years old and Stumpy, Stumpy, Stumpy. Get right here, bruh. Twentieth in progressive AOI standings. Good season so far for yep. the rookie. What is that like? Fourth and rookie of the year, like there's like 11th, 12th, 13th in yeah. points, are like all rookies. It's really amazing. You got to get a top 10 in AOI if you want to win Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year. It seems every year. Jay Shakir getting a top 10. You know, Drew Cook had a top 10 in points his yeah. rookie year as well. Will to start the day was Austin third Felix. rookie of the year standing. Yeah, so yeah, that's crazy. This is gonna. This one's already half out of his mouth. I'm get it out so it doesn't come out in the live well. Ooh. Hey, how about it? Speeder boats. Uh oh. Big fish alert. Bernie Schultz. Whoa. We're just talking about a five pound, 13 ounce, or how about that? He's up to 15 pounds, 14 ounces on bass track in the lead by several pounds. Four, wow. two. 15 pounds already. Man. 16. When you catch a 512 at Lay Lake, you need to make that a, a heck of a day. You do not want to come in with three or four fish, so to see he already has a limit. 
You want to have over 16 pounds if you have a six pounder in the well. Bernie set off a few fireworks this season yeah. so far. Yeah, he, he has, has been. I've seen him on top. At Giant bag at Murray. Times. Yeah. And great yeah. bag at Okeechobee. Yeah, absolutely. Bernie Schultz, the veteran, been fishing here since the 92, I believe. He's wow. Been fishing at least that long. Bass, at least that long. 15 pounds and 14 ounces. Will Davis, Matt Heron, Chad Pipkins now in our top four. Yeah! Burger! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Day one, Lay Lake on the Coosa River. A lot of Bassmaster history here. No elite history. And did I say that our leader, Bernie Schultz, is, is, is a, his Bassmaster career goes back to 92, 82. I misspoke. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to talk about history. We got it here. That's incredible. Been nice. fishing the Bassmaster Tournament Trail since 1982. Unbelievable. There's the six anglers that we are in the boat with all day long today and how they're distributed on Lay Lake. Five of the six, not surprisingly, from right here in the state of Alabama. Matt Heron's been threatening to leave the base of the Logan Martin Dam for about an hour now, and he is still not abandoned that. Matt's having a great morning, but he's mad at that chewing gum right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I said it in the podcast with how the last few events in South Carolina did for Matt Heron. He would be mad at him at his home, one of his home lakes, but definitely madder this morning. Well, you know when you get around. This next place we're going to go to, we ought to light him up. So if you're Brandon Cobb, do you burn down that one clump of grass or you try to save it for, for another day? <laughs> I think he's burning it down. Maybe if you catch all of them, three pounders will roll in and hang out, you know, in that group tomorrow. Could be. Could be. <laughs> I wouldn't bet my crumble cookie on it. But <laughs> Got Canterbury, a little slower start than we thought, but I, I'd be willing to bet by the end of the day, he'll have his five fish limit. He, he a lot seems, of experience on this Coosa River. Seemed optimistic this morning, talking about the fact that they're letting the, the water rise for the, in advance of the recreational traffic yeah. on a hot weekend, so. Downside of that is more recreational traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 12,000 acre lake. So it looks like Matt Heron has moved. Saying this next spot would really be good. Yeah, he's excited. Give him his top billing. What is interesting, and you know this, Davey, when they turn the water on or when it when it goes up in flow, it doesn't have to be dramatic, but those creases change. Where you catch them when it's at 10,000 cubic feet versus where they position when it's 20,000 cubic feet. So you almost have a built-in rest period where if you caught them and you left and the water changes, somebody who rolls up there, they might not, those fish might leave or another seam activates a little bit more and those fish kind of get you know you don't know where your school goes but they they renegotiate every day the, the bait fish moves around mm -hmm. also and it's it's really the, the first time long time ago obviously uh that was up the river on lay lake the water was not moving they weren't generating and i forget the time let's say 12 noon they were supposed to start generating at about that time, I started seeing the shad just start flicking and moving. You could tell before that you could see, or I could feel or see the water moving, you could tell the bait fish, it was already starting to happen. And, and just like everything changes when, when that water generates in it, you know, when they're generating uh, power and that water is moving. 
And the different speeds, like you're saying, it will position those fish in different places. But it's it's really incredible. It is Lay Lake, but it's technically a river system that mm -hmm. that current means everything to those fish that are offshore. And, and even the ones on the bank, it totally changes their mood. You're a shad and a bird watcher when it comes to the yes. generation <laughs> times, right? Yes. That was back before uh, technology has advanced. You couldn't just look at your cell phone and see yeah, what the generation yeah, schedule right, was. Yeah. You had to look for shad and birds. They knew without, yeah. without cell phones. Too yeah, many they, good they memories right here. Yeah. Big ones have been caught. Lots of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I fished here for 40 years, 30 years. Paradise Point in the back. Yes. I think so. Background of Scott Canterbury. Here we go. You gotta go lie. Same thing. He caught. Little Davis Jr. making a move. There, bye. Oh, uh, Heron. He's moved a little bit. Wish these fish would go live. As much as I thought. Had a different camera angle. When we had that summertime college event at Lay Lake, I remember going and following some teams and they were, some of the contenders were up near the base of the dam. Trying to get this drill for up. They may have had spot lock or power poles or raptors, whatever the case may be. I did not. So they lent me their anchor. And so I threw an anchor out just to hang with them to take photos because it was so swift. I mean, I don't know the number that day, but it was probably in the 25 to 30,000 cubic feet. It was, it was flowing. And if you didn't have any kind of way to stop yourself from drifting back, you could make it down to the Alabama power plant in about a hot minute, you know? I'm surprised we're not seeing more anglers. I've seen one or two boats up I closer to them, up but there. it's, uh, I don't see them. See them now, but there was there was a boat you on know, the left side quick there. But when I'm surprised on, there's not more people anglers you get you know, in the tournament up mm -hmm. there. Like we did over there. I mean, it's just bang, 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 bang. I think Heron mentioned Kobe Krieger was nearby, and he's also in our top ten. He had to watch a little bit of the show, have some show of his own. Remember at the Pickwick event, uh, yeah. Kobe Krieger. Yeah. He likes to fish the oh man tail race. Yeah, getting in that uh, grove of trees there, right in the middle of the <laughs> yeah. surfing, basically through there. I'm still amazed they allow anglers to get there that close fish right to, there, to right the dam the there at, at Pickwick. Boy, they... Yeah, it's in it's in the uh, Alabama River territory on rocks and dangers that oh, when man. that starts to flow, and it's We're a much catch bigger dam. We're gonna ever get that yeah. bait in there. Here we go. Mm, I don't think he'll measure. Keeper. If he will, I'm gonna put him in there. <laughs> he will. If we weigh him in, we are in trouble. That's number two. <laughs> Awful big. And he'll be about 10 ounces. That's the smallest keeper I've ever seen. I thought it was a goggle eye like he had. I did too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's some guy's entering fish hackney and combs have entered him. It's eight ounces. All right, big boy. Hackneys will probably come in around four pounds when he comes in later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if we weigh him in, we are in trouble. Unless we catch three sixes. Then I'll take them two and be happy. Yeah. Big fish so far is a 512 from Bernie Schultz. Got about a baker's dozen of uh, limits, five fish limits already today. It's been nice and steady so far. Yeah. 65 anglers on the board, probably more than that because there's some without yes, Marshall. 15 right? or so maybe. Yeah. It's 
So he lived with me so that we could go to the same high school. I think we'll see Scott Canterbury stay. If I just blow in on the bank, on shallow there. vegetation all day. Will Davis has moved off a little bit. A canal where they're going in and bedding. We leave here, we're going to the dam. How far is the dam? 20 minutes from here. And if Will Davis is in the same region he was when the last time we saw our maps, not far below the Alabama power plant. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a running time guesstimation there, which power plant's probably five to seven minutes from the beeswax. If he's about 20 minutes, you know, so it's a half hour from takeoff to the dam. A little quicker on the way I back if they're putting full. water out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might not Better fuel, estimating time. Stuff. You Man, know I made it back early. I have to. That's why I decided to stay down here instead of go up there. Really? You know, for the start with. I'm about to expose this right here, by gosh. Right in the under. If I ain't a boat already in there. <laughs> There's your noise makers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm about to go in here. No, sir. It's real shallow right there. Sound like Shane Durantz, on the water photographer. Durantz, as we like to call him. Durantz. <laughs> what lake was it where we had the goose climbing in the boat? Was that, uh, that Murray? Murray. Yeah. Murray. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, the goose whisperer. Yeah. Right. Might already been a boat come in here, and if that, that's the case, we're gonna roll and drift back down behind it. Come over it that way, let's see. Sir. Well, sneaky place wasn't sneaky yeah. enough today. <laughs> Those old sneaky places on a 12,000 acre lake. Yeah, they don't. 2023 aren't quite so sneaky as they were in the 90s. One of our guys right there. I don't know. Also, it goes without saying if you say, I'm about to expose something on live. You've already said, yeah, you're yeah. like, they already know. Will Davis says yeah. that, and he's, you know, he's got a right right. Well, he is going to sneak on in there. <laughs> wow. Just another reason he wanted a camera with him right here. <laughs> uh-huh. John Cox just caught his first fish, a one-pounder. A little surprising. This sets up yeah. well for him. Do you have him in your fantasy pick, Ronnie? I did. Oh, I that, did. I knew there was uh -oh. a reason you hadn't mentioned. I got his my name hands so far. clenched together over here, just <laughs> yeah. sweating. It. I didn't know that, Ronnie. We're chewing gum. We about to expose Ronnie Moore's pick. <laughs> hey, Brian knew who needs Trim it. Trimming up, in our throwing top mud, 10. Ronnie Moore, on your pick. Yeah, it's all over. <laughs> now, if he's back in the back here, then we're really putting the puzzle in. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting to, the water's turning on back in this. That would be something I would not be surprised. Uh, it looks like the water is a little stirred up. Somebody's been in there. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, these sneaky places back in the day were <laughs> truly sneaky, but there's no such thing now. No. Heck, my Lake Master map would show that. Your Google map sure would. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to pull in here and try to catch a few uh, betters if they had a boat already in here. They don't seem to be. It's been a pretty good morning, you know. I've, I got three twos, four. And I'm about to catch a couple four pounders, you know, I'll be in a lot better shape. Y'all now, I <laughs> take a wasp. Miss a wall spray. Excited to see what we're going to see in this sneaky yeah. place, Tommy. Well, we'll keep the camera rolling. Uh, unfortunately, we won't we have tell to anybody step about us. it, though. We'll no, keep it no, to ourselves. No. We, that's right. We'll keep the secret as best we can, which is not at all. Will Davis, though, third place. Trying to find a little something extra back in that pocket there. As I say, we'll roll on that. We'll have to take ourselves a little step away for a bit now. But Bernie Schultz, the veteran, on top. As he has done already certain points this season, Brian New Man. jumping up into second place Angler from South Carolina. So we got a lot of changes, a lot happening on Lay Lake. The Waterbreaker Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota. And by Dakota Lithium. Day one of four days of fishing at the fifth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at legendary Lay Lake on the Coosa River here in Alabama. That is Will Davis Jr. Staying in our top five for the time being. Last 30, 40 minutes or so, uh, investigating a little sort of a sneaky place right there. We just lost that, but <laughs> we'll be back. We got to get back and see that a little. Yeah, we want to see if he, he gets said. anything there. He was yeah. going to expose for yeah, us here. Right. Bassmaster Live. Is that a bass? Brandon Cobb? Didn't really like bite it. It was almost like I ran, ran into him. He was sitting so shallow. I don't think that was a bite even. Not sure. Something happened. That is really hard to guess. <laughs> Maybe that's a gar. There's a gar up there shallow too. Brandon Cobb sitting in 21st place. Man, this would be his worst finish of the year, Tommy. I know. <laughs> Panic time <laughs> right almost. Now. Yeah. 21st. I don't know. Three top tens already this year. And if you count, the, obviously not a points event, but you count the classic, that's four top Four, tens. yeah. Eighth place of the classic. That's crazy. Yeah. I was talking to Dave Mercer there at the last event about how Brandon Cobb yeah, pretty much and John Cox are very different, but they seem to enjoy just going fishing every day about as much as, as anyone on the Elite Series. Not, you know, everyone has pressure. You're, you know, entry fees away from home. The competition is so tough, but they really seem to just be going out and having fun each and every day. Cobb is what you'd call an old school young guy. He talked to me on the phone about just not, his lack of there. interest in, in sometimes utilizing forward facing sonar. He likes not, to just go fishing at times and. Sometimes he feels like he's happens. not going to be able to win the event if he's not leaning into it more. He does, obviously, his fair share, but 
it's a uh, it's tough to go and bed right there, but reprogram your brain in some events sometimes. So in these straight fishing tournaments like we've had the last couple weeks, definitely he's yeah. in his element. So I got to fish with him See, some this off past obvious. off season, and uh, he's really really that way. You're exactly right. He he doesn't use the forward facing sonar and stuff as much mm -hmm. as you would think for someone his age. He loves to just old school power fish. He might be part of his problem with the smallmouth up north, to be honest with you, because that's where he seems to, to struggle mm -hmm. more than the places we have earlier in the year. In yeah, the, and the, the one year right. that he did have a great, great finish at the St. Lawrence River with smallmouth, he was throwing a Carolina rig in current, you know, up by, or not in current, uh, he was actually farther away from the current than anyone else. Was able to maximize and get a good finish. But yes, for as much as he likes playing video games in his spare time, he does right. not necessarily like doing it on the water. You don't see that very often. A wood, uh, here he goes. A wood duck was standing in the field. He was just standing up there in the grass. Wood duck standing in the field this time I've of year all tells all me they've got little ones. Yeah. They try to get your attention and right. get you to come chase me well, over yeah, the reason. Don't, don't pay attention. Not. Don't pay attention to those kids. Up there. <laughs> exactly. Well, for how much they were saying it was tough, there's some yeah, nice fish being caught. Brian, who caught a five-pounder to get in our second place. Jamie Hartman, a 314. Clifford Perch, 37. Poroznik, a three and a half. Pollock just got in our top ten with a three-pounder. Yeah, there's good fishing all up and down the Coosa River. Oh, it's yeah. just, you know, you might not have so 100 pounds right for here. four days. Yeah. I don't think you're going to, but it's, it's good fishing. I'll be on my knees. Steve Kennedy, fifth place with four fish. I ten, think the ten. desire of a lot of anglers is to be able to pattern four and five pounders, and this is a place where you could fish along and catch two pounders all day. You catch a five like Brian knew, and you're, it looks real good at the end of the day, but you're like, I don't know Apparently why I caught the one five. one rock or know, something out two. there that they really like, and they sit. If you can get this bait to wash in it, But it has been some kind of slow. Well, Canterbury is oh, winning the goggle eye yeah, tournament he's, right he's now. Yeah, he's got the stump <laughs> knocker thing <laughs> dialed in. One more good spot. <laughs> he'll, he'll connect on some large mouth here. Uh-oh. Here we go. Yeah. Now we've got him in the place that he said he was going to expose. Go ahead and expose it with yeah. some big largemouth for us, Will. While you're at it. Ooh. You said someone's going to come out there and get it. Yeah. Come on, man. I ain't never had one do like that. Uh, a little bit, but she'll go back. It's weird. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his bait here. Watch it about the time it goes out of sight. Yeah, that was weird. Swing and a miss. Got his whole bait. Mm. Oh, there it was. Yeah. See the flash of the fish. Yep. Good one, too. Mm -hmm. One of the only times of the year that you can probably get a fish to bite again is during the spawn or during a shad spawn, something like that. There we go. Yes, sir. In the mouth. He mentioned she in the mouth there. The yep, that's probably a spawning well, she fish. She was ready though, wasn't she? <laughs> she was ready. Mama's fish, one pound, eight ounces. That'll certainly help. I thought she was way bigger than that. All right. Help cool though. 
Yeah, you don't want to burn a place like this that you feel like you can maybe have yourself, but man, if you get out to a good start on day one on your home body of water, you can free up some things for you and you don't want to be saving it in those fish. But I picked it. Yeah. You know, transitioning out of the spawn. Car, yeah. I was like, what in the world? I was just thinking about that. I don't know whether it's wise to that expose a place like this on day one, but, but like I mentioned earlier, I don't think yeah, you no, can think for one second you've got a secret place on Lay Lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Better to be the first one in there. Yes. And whether you expose it or not, right? Yeah. Well, you got to feel confident having 12, 13 yeah. pounds or something, not even fishing the dams yet or any of the current. And so if he goes up there and catches a kicker today, awesome. And then that can be his main plan tomorrow. He doesn't have to hit what he hit today. You know, you can kind of, I guess, shuck and jive on that. Do what now? Live. <laughs> ah, caught me a little, little better. I'm about to uh, change some fish over. Come on the other side. I ain't got much. Some little spots. Spot dog. We talked about earlier. We got, we got one good one. Doing different things, a lot going on this time of year. He started out with on that. the we'll willow grass at Shoreline Vegetation, caught a few fish, then moved we'll out, uh, caught some fish a little like on a flat point on the mm -hmm. top we'll water lure, and he's in a yet. little hidey hole. Catch a fish on the bed. Yeah. It's funny how all the speculation flows and ebbs in, in advance of a tournament like this. First we heard, oh, we're coming at a great time. It's, it's, it's looking at all, all systems go, and then a couple, couple of days ago, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just, <laughs> welcome to the Dead Sea, and then... It's in Lake Murray, Dorothy. Yeah. <laughs> Every tournament the, matters the same, though. I mean, the point, that's why it's a oh, point no system, not a pound yes, system, absolutely. like it was at one time on the Bassmaster yeah. tournament oh, trail. Out right there. Every, Tournament is equally important. To me, these are... Yeah, I pitched that fighting frog in there, man. And she I, freaking... And I just said they're all equal, but these seem to be the ones that'll really separate the field. Because right going, going to Lake Murray, you knew I the shad spawn, the, the heron spawn. And uh, Santee Cooper, a lot of cypress fall, trees. And I looked, and she was coming after it, so I just reel a bit and let it fall. And when I let it fa fall, she come up there and uh, smoked it. And uh, and came off, and uh, I got one more in here. I just got to figure out. If I couldn't see her when I came in here. Oh, so it has another one marked. Yeah. Will Davis Jr. definitely one of the favorites coming in here to this tournament. Lives just 30 minutes away. A lot of experience, a lot of term, 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 tournaments. I can't say the word now. One here of sure. all, at all levels. Will Davis, one of those guys that we think about for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing as well. One clerical error that we need to let you know about. We have a couple Davises, we have a couple Huffs. Sometimes they get rearranged. Clint Davis, supposed to be in bucket E, is in bucket A. Where, meanwhile, Will Davis was in bucket E. Hot commodity when you're at in the bucket with the lower angler of the year guys and you're having a great season. So Will Davis definitely one that's been picked by over half the people in fantasy fishing yeah. this week. So how did he get in bucket? Well, you said it was a mistake. The there. Davis last a, name, wrong okay. Davis, put in the wrong Transpose place. Transpose the name. I was at dinner with uh, some friends the other night and he, like I wouldn't know anything about fa <laughs> fantasy fishing, I don't, but he was like, so who do I need to pick in this bucket? And he told me Will Davis was in bucket E. I said, I will say that would probably be a smart pick right there. <laughs> Trust me. Well, it's actually turned out to be good fish catching so far this morning. We have no complaints so far. Bernie Schultz sure doesn't. He's already up a pushing on 16 pounds, and we're just in, wrapping up the first quarter of fishing here pretty much. Brian New, good, good morning, along with Will Davis right there, and just put another good one in the boat. Matt Heron doing something completely different up by the, by the dam there. Steve Kennedy. Another Alabaman pops into our top five, and not unexpectedly. Yeah! A water! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats.
First time ever for the elites at Lay Lake here, a place with so much history. We got to full field fishing today and tomorrow in the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite here in Shelby County, Alabama. Having a lot of fun out there so far today. We've seen some great fish catches. We have to sort of re reset our size expectations when we, when we come to this part of the country. It's just not going to be like it is at Santa Cooper. Or something like about that. Eight Fishing just as just as fun. This is Will Davis. That's a hard little shot to get it just right. This little spot in a backwater that has yielded two keepers already. One of them backlashes, mate. Got a fish on the bed here. Got him. Oh my I don't think she's gonna help. She sucked it in, didn't she? <laughs> I said I smoked it, did it? Now I gotta figure out who's who now. I didn't look. I don't even know if it's gonna help, dude. It's pretty sweet. That was sweet. It looks bigger too, don't it? Oh god. Good shot there watching his bait disappear. Yeah. You know, large mouth bass. Yeah, Anthony's already like, yeah, that's going to be a powerful replay of the dick. Whoa, we got camera guys telling us which is powerful. We will decide that, Davey. <laughs> we have not held out. We still expect to see a five pounder today. Don't be calling that too early. I think the camera guys got a tally of how many replay of the days they get. <laughs> it's like the stickers on the helmets. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. That's a great idea. We love our camera guys, Brandon. They have to rag on the youngest of the crew out there. It's literally should... growing up with the Bassmaster Leaf Series as we speak, because he's so young. <laughs> Cole Sands fish came in, and he's in our top five, a little over 11 pounds. Oh. Well, guess what? Oh, ain't no way, Tommy. <laughs> uh, you're gonna I think have, the truck is spiting me over you're here. You're going to have to do this one, Ronnie. <laughs> well, for the power pole replay of the day, I mean, we got to be in the boat with one of the best anglers on Lay Lake. Will Davis Jr. comes in a little hidey hole, catching a couple bed and bass. This one might not be the biggest keeper. It might call a little bit for him, but the visual, watching that white fighting frog disappear, is exactly what you want when you need to hook him in the mouth. Will Davis, unlike what I thought, I'm holding out for a five pounder. He's the power pole replay of the day for the first two hours of Bassmaster Live. Right. Well, so you can't take that away from him. <laughs> now, just know if if we see a five, I'm call I'm queuing it up right now. I, I don't have the controls to punch it up, but we're gonna I'm, we're gonna make it happen. Oh, they will let you know <laughs> that you do not have the controls to punch it up. Right now. <laughs> You do not get that's you don't get, to get out call. of your lane. No. <laughs> Stand down. I don't know where this fish went, man. She was locked yesterday. <laughs> oh, he's got a patch of them in here oh, on the bed. Yeah, this schooled up on the all whole this, hands. This place was always on the menu today. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's just so glad he had a camera in there with him. If you think about you go. the fact that Lake Okeechobee can have a big wave of spawners come up in the first week of May with how long their spawning season is, no doubt that there's still fish in the spawn mode at yeah. Lake across the lake. One thing I've certainly learned uh, through the years, there are always yes, still sir. some spawning bass in, in May uh, throughout the whole southeast. Mm. Definitely, definitely so. But it is surprising. Uh, Lake Okeechobee, though, you, you would think, man, they've been spawning there since uh, November. Yeah, Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, that's the dinner bell. Wow. I don't even know why I even tried that. She even... All my offshore stuff years ago. There wasn't nobody doing it. And now, everybody doing it.
I'm with you there, Matt Heron. All my offshore <laughs> stuff from years yeah, ago. I pulled in here and I ain't seen one. Coming back out, see one. I ain't never in my life. Live life. Well, we caught a uh, two and a half pounder on the bed. It wasn't nothing really to brag about, but one of my big ones was gone. Just one of them deals, you know. So I got a couple more betters we're gonna try to get. I got one I, I fooled with for an hour and a half yesterday and finally got her to bite, so I don't really know what her deal was. So maybe she'll bite. She's a good, good one. She's five or so. But I'm about to go see if we can make her bite again. Hopefully that's not the one that's in Bernie's live well. Mm. Bernie, known to be a good sight fisherman. Yes, he is. Yeah, there's one on bed right here, but he ain't going. I don't know. He looked a little bit bigger than what I thought. We're about to find out. Yeah, I think so. I, <laughs> I think, think we put so. the brakes on here, bro. <laughs> Pretty close on him now. I'd say he's still set up there. Maybe they've slowed the water down a little bit, Ronnie. Did you see the full cast when they were supposed to I think, own it off? I think the next time that they were supposed to move water from Logan Martin was going to be in the afternoon, like when that rain hits at 1 p.m., they'll up the generators and send some more water. But I don't know if there's, you know, it still says one generator until that point. Okay. I don't know if they lessened it. Let me see what the current readout is. Stinging rocks make me nervous. It's about the same it was at, you know, an hour ago, but. Okay. And they moved the thunderstorms back this afternoon, Ronnie. They ain't biting closer like to weigh in biting. time. Well, if what hits us, hit us this morning, hits Lay Lake at some point this weekend. Oh my. They're going to mm. get some water level rising because. Oh, no kidding. I think I drove through three inches of rain in the 15 minutes it took me to get to work. Most of that was moving up up from the south, wasn't the it? The south and east is real yeah. odd. It's sort of yeah. different. That's what I thought. Well, if it's moving that way, then that's what hit them in practice, right. maybe yeah. Tuesday afternoon. Toby Krieger, right where we thought he might be. Mm -hmm. Still alive. Uh, Couple of new folks in our top 10, Alex Redwine and Taku Ito. Almost to two dozen limits. Good to see Taku having a good tournament. Well, I rode with him at the classic practice day. Oh yeah, uh, right. Thought, ah, small mouth, you know, it's a good, good pick. Wanted to spend a day in a boat with him anyway, and he said, uh, River smallmouth do not like his boat. Ah. Big Lake smallmouth love to come to Taku's boat. <laughs> River smallmouth run from Taku's ah. boat. <laughs> Maybe the spotted bass, Coosa River spotted bass, like his boat. I just got informed, Davis, it's a great time to throw somebody under the bus. Just got informed that our old friend who worked on Bassmaster.com religiously, Chris Mitchell, uh, has moved on to uh, a new you career, and he is with Alabama Power. So if they don't generate the water we want this week, we can blame Chris Mitchell for not generating enough current. I just found that out that, uh, that he had moved on to another job with Alabama Power about a week ago. I was surprised. How about a new leader? Five and a half pounder from Brandon Paul, and look, he's up to 16 oh, pounds boy. even. Boy. Wow. And there it is, a Skeeter Boat's big fish alert from 
Brandon Polnick, six, five wow. and a half pounds, 16 pounds total. Such, is that New putting leader. the cart before the horse there? You were so excited, <laughs> you didn't even let the music cue in yet. <laughs> Chase Sansom, one of our new photographers and workers with Bass, who kind of came in when Chris left. Um, he is on Brandon Polnick this morning, so hopefully he's still there and saw some of the party go down. One thing I would say about throwing under the bus over on him, now that Chris does not work for Bass anymore, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> he he probably doesn't have any filters. Oh anymore. no, he could yeah, yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he could do me in. I'd have no more yeah. no more career on Bassmaster yeah, Live if that was okay. I wanna, might want to golden rule it a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that ain't good. Throw it all off. What is it, all's fun and love and war, or what, all is fair and love and war, or something like that? That's right. Just be careful. When he calls and lets me know that he's changing careers, he said, uh, hey, I know we didn't always see eye to eye. And I was like, that's the way to put oh, it. I, I love you, Chris. This is aggravating, man. I don't know why they're not biting. I know I feel like I'm, I'm outstaying my welcome. I know that. Slowing down for Matt Heron just a little bit. Will Davis making his way back out. Yeah, Mitchell left himself open for ridicule several times when he lost a computer in, <laughs> yeah, the, in, the, in, the, in the Great Lakes. Backpack. They uh, presented his new one in a fish tank on his desk. <laughs> And then uh, Sago toured the Bass offices in Birmingham yesterday, and Chris Mitchell commented about, did you see the shrine to me? And it was too easy, and I didn't want to say where, where that shrine might be in the offices. <laughs> Come on, Sue. No, no. That's a key, that's a key poche hole. <laughs> no, I, he ain't been in there, but what I'm saying is, it'd be nice to have that boat. Expect to see things happening for Clint Davis as the day progresses. I know he was one of the ones most excited when he found out we were going to Lay Lake when the schedule was announced. Yeah, he's had a tough go of it so far this season. Way down in the standings. Be a good, good deal for him to stay where he's positioned right now. Frankly, good place. To turn it around. Yep. I remember the. 2021 Classic, he had to leave because of his shoulder, and then went and got surgery. Mm-hmm. Had a rough go of it. Somebody has sunk a brush pile right here. I think Clint did well at Neely. I mean, it's, it seems like there are certain parts of the country, I mentioned it on Bassmaster Live, being from the Carolinas, if you know blueback herring or you know the, you seem to have more of an advantage at Hartwell and Murray than you would at maybe a Santee Cooper. And then when you come to the Coosa River, if you are a Coosa River guy, it seems like you have just the ability to have a better advantage on your on your body of water than other people's home lakes. No problem. I see y'all playing this day down there everywhere. Well, that's good news. He's yeah. seeing them everywhere. Yeah, he's got himself around him, so we expect things happening for Clint Davis sooner rather than later, but right now, well, it's been happening all through his career. Two-time progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Brandon Polnick moving up to the top of our leaderboard. First angler to bust the 16-pound mark right there. Head of the veteran Bernie Schultz, Brian New, Will Davis hanging in there in our top five along with Matt Heron. we got Sands, Kennedy, Perosnik, Redwine, and all the rest right now. Yeah! A water! No way! Woo! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Nine tournaments make up the schedule for the Bassmaster Elite Series 2023. We are at stop number five, so this is dead center in our schedule as we move from you know, starting out in Florida, a couple of events, and one of them in the Florida-Georgia border. 
two in South Carolina, and now we are at Lay Lake, where the fishing is ongoing. And of course, we hit that first tournament, Davey, thinking, well, maybe we do, maybe we don't know what's going on. I think we would be wrong, because <laughs> Tyler Rivette fooled us. Very, very different, but I do remember starting, uh, I was on the water there, I wanted to show you our new uh, technology we had on the water, looking at some forward-facing sonar, not thinking that we would see a whole lot of it at Lake Okeechobee, but Tyler Rivette, in the Kissimmee River, just above takeoff there, was able to hold his first blue trophy over his head using forward-facing sonar so in the river, some hard spots, a little current breaks. And then uh, the, the next event where I think a lot of us thought we would see forward-facing sonar in Spring Creek, the Standing Timber, I went there the first thing you did. You that, that morning. Out. And the only boat I saw well, this guy right here, and uh, he Joey start to finish, just really showed out there, having a having a great, great tournament. Another first time blue trophy over his head. That's right. The first two events, first timers, but an angler with one win under his belt was uh, going to be the man who prevailed at Lake Murray. What a wild tournament there, Ronnie. And the drama did not lessen at Lake Murray. We saw so many big bags. Within the final hour of the tournament, we had five anglers with a legitimate shot, and that included Drew Benton, who came from 10th to 1st. He went from 2nd on day 1 to leading after day 2, dropping to 10th place going into the final day, and then winning the event to get his second blue trophy. That peak performance of his week, one of our editors, JP, knocks those out of the park. Just went up on Bassmaster.com this week and, and our YouTube and things like that if you want to check it out. And then to Santee Cooper and it was Luke Palmer. Yes. Santee Cooper was meant for Luke Palmer to win this year. A lot of anglers fishing the Cypress trees, even more so than last year. Less fish on the bed in the Potato Creek area where Drew Cook won the year before. But Luke Palmer showed he has got what it takes at Santee Cooper. Third place finish for him there last year and was able to Ah, I win by about 14 pounds this year. Just really, oh, really yeah. almost lapped the field, it seemed like. Turned into a blowout. He did lap the field on the final day, that's for sure. Three out of the four events so far, won by first-time winners on the Elite Series. And this fellow would like to be a first-time winner, the rookie, Gaston. You mentioned it, Davey. Luke Palmer, that's 12 inches, what do you think? 14 pounds, sixth largest Elite Series margin of victory ever. One bite away from a belt there. Almost doubled up the 10th place finisher. That's incredible. <laughs> That's incredible anywhere, but if you think about it, going there for the you know back-to-back -back years of Santee Cooper Lakes to to win by 14 pounds, you know when Patrick Walters set that record, yeah, it was yeah. it was basically new what he did in the fall mm -hmm. year at Toledo Bend using forward facing and jerk bait, but really no surprise. Lee Palmer caught him on Cypress Street. Yeah. Well, and what's crazy, Davey, is that normally when you see a margin of victory like that, it's a wire-to-wire -wire win, or maybe they're second after day one, and then they jump into lead the last three days. Luke Palmer didn't take the lead until day three. I bet I could have went and Led two morning, days of the tournament was able to get that big of a lead because it happened so fast for him. But I took a chance. I mean, you catch 20 pounds first thing, and you do, you know, you did the right thing. Or just two good ones, you know. It don't take 20 pounds, just a couple of good ones. Four box. You know, I mean, today's probably the slowest morning that I've seen yet, and, that, and we, we've got a pretty strong east wind. I don't know if it's got the shallow fish shut down, but I, this was my, I mean, I was going to fish grass primarily. I'd like to fish grass, but you got to get some bites, so um, I'm going to change it up here in a few minutes. Maybe fish out a little deeper, see if we can't get some fish in the live well may come back to the grass later on. I've only had three bites, bass bites. I had one while ago that just rolled all over it. He just never touched it. And it's uh, been a super, super slow morning so far. Boats, a lot of boats are running, so. Some people's not catching them. I know somebody is though. <laughs> the guys that run up to the dam, that, current is a little more stable. 
I don't know how much they've been catching or whatever, but it's a little more stable, you know, without in the current rather than fishing real shallow grass. But we're going to see. I mean, this is the way. Grass is definitely the way to win the tournament if you could get some. And you don't have to have them every day. You can catch 18 or 20 pounds a day, one or two days, and boost you up. But you're going to have to... You're gonna have to catch something today. I mean, I, th I figure you need to be in the teens, and I'm a long ways from that, so. We're gonna keep our head down. We got a long time, doesn't take long. I mean, I fished a lot of tournaments on Lay Lake where I didn't have them at 10 or 11 o'clock and catch 18 pounds, so. We're gonna keep our head down until the last cast. One thing you notice, uh, it's 12,000 acres of fishable water, and, and they do seem to be spread out fairly well. We haven't seen a lot of people bust mm -hmm. up, but you're fishing behind people oftentimes when you don't realize you've done that. And, and uh, we saw, was it, was it David Gaston that was here earlier, or Will Davis? I think it was David Gaston was fishing this same stretch just, yeah. just about an hour ago. one thing about being a local is the history factor of where you choose your spots because of what reasons and then also you know when you make the right decision you've got other places you could have been you know like that's what we're saying you could save your current fish for the weekend you could go for some shad spawn fish on a random day if you need to things like that totally agree with what Canterbury was saying there though it's Sure, you expected to have more than two pounds at this point, but things can happen mm -hmm. in a hurry. A lot of fishing time left. I would be shocked if we don't see him come in with five pretty good fish. Yeah, I think I think he'll be in the teens. Well, guys, when we opened up the show with Scott Canterbury's, you know, pre-takeoff interviews, we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon Method, Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge. Scott Canterbury was talking about the water level factor. We talk about the current, we talk about the grass, shad spawn, the spawning fish, but water level, this time of the year when you have those finicky fry garters or fish that just want to be shallow, water fluctuation can make a big deal. And so with it being about half a foot low, the last few days of practice and then coming up and only being three or four inches low, that's a big deal for these shallow fish. And just taking a sample of our Hummingbird Lake Master mapping of just some of these creeks that are popular on Lay Lake that we think about, the ones that aren't really affected by the bottom dam or the upper dam, they're kind of mid-lake region, trying to get a, you know, a, a good conservative view of it. You look at the main river in the dark blue is that river channel, green is, uh, or then there's lighter blue that's kind of the mid-depth, green is that 10 foot, 12 foot range, and then uh, yellow, or yellow is that, green is shallower, five to 10. That one to three foot range is the red, and you see the backs of all of these creeks. The difference of making that 12,000 acres fishable, Davey, is if you have that water at level or maybe above, above full pool just a little bit, all that red area is more accessible. Those fish feel more comfortable in those regions, and they're not necessarily susceptible to pull straight out to the main river drag yet. They can stay in the backs of these pockets longer. So for some of these guys that were running a shad spawn, we saw a lot of them on the main river. It's a lot more stable. If the water did drop, they just go to another level of grass closer to the main drag, whereas some of these fish that are maybe bunched up from spawning back here, they need that water to stay level, at least the anglers do, so that those fish don't evacuate and head to the ditches, the channels as they make their way out to their summer haunts. You wanna, if you're trying to fish shallow, you wanna keep them there as long as possible. If you're somebody who wants to fish that offshore brush, maybe Clint Davis fishing more of a place that's not gonna change much, maybe fish are coming to you, drop that water and those, those guys will have a lot more uh, fish coming to them. So Scott Canterbury, you can find an area where, hey, maybe they, these fish feel comfortable, that they haven't evacuated yet, and you can get right in a hurry. Holy cow. I was all in the right place at the right time and can't get him to bite. That's how dialed in they are sometimes. Good gracious.
I shook one off right there yesterday on a swim jig, choked it. I mean, that's that's what you're looking for. I mean, that was a wasn't a great big one, but it looked like a two or three pounder. He's just sitting there right now. <laughs> The shad started spawning right when I made a cast. And see, he didn't even get it the first time. Blew up around it and didn't touch it. Hmm, that's crazy. Crazy town there. Kenny Bear talking about, and that's how dialed in they are. That's still a few shad up there spawning around that shallow vegetation, and evidently he threw right, right mm. where he shook a fish off yesterday, and that fish was dialed in on the, the real thread thin shad and yeah. would not have anything to do with his mm. swim jig. He said he was going to stay shallow vegetation, and that's what he has done. Well, certainly one of the favorites coming in here, Scott Canterbury. It is surprising to see him uh, as far down as he is right now, but as you say, and Scott said, it can happen very, very quickly. It happened very quickly, obviously, for a guy who's a favorite about every time we tee it up out here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And, and there's your BMC on point right there, Brandon Polnick. Yeah, you look at Brandon Polnick. BMC Redline on point. He started off really early this morning with a pound and a half. -er. That's not a bad start, but if you look, the big key for him being BMC Redline on point is every fish got bigger and bigger for Brandon Polnick, and that's what you want to happen with that five fish limit. Your fifth fish being five and a half pounds for Brandon Polnick. Word at 913. Yeah, and word from the water, that 16 pound bag, there's possibilities of something he could duplicate there. Chase Sansom, coverage really? team out on the water, okay. said he saw Brandon Polnick, says that some sight fish have been in his limit, you know, whether they're all five sight fish or not. But he says that Brandon mentioned, I have seen 15, a 15 pound bag swimming around as well. So wow. maybe this is an area that he could say, upgrade yeah. one more time, get rid of that pound and a half or and then, and then maybe Back let off. it be. Yeah. I tried to go back there in that pond in practice and I got stuck trying to go through that little gap. I'm sure Bill went back there, so I am not gonna venture back there. I'm about to fish this dock and then go fish like those two grass clumps out there. And then we're going on. All right. What you just talked about on the water, more water being accessible. A little skinny. Caught some fish so Four far. Four inches today. lower. I have not caught got any big stuck fish. trying to go in there. Yeah. I kind of was sticking to these creeks and expected not to catch many, actually. I was expecting to get, you know, six, seven bites all day. I was just hoping there were better ones. Well, I've caught 15 fish already. They just uh, got one, like two and a half pounder, and then all the rest are just keepers, like barely keepers. So kind of. Kind of different than I thought the day would go so far, but caught some fish. I thought it'd be a lot slower than this, so even though they're tiny fish, it gets you somewhere anyway. Maybe not where we want to go, but we're somewhere. Well, Scott Canterbury and Matt Herring. A lot of experience on the Coosa River between those two. Mm -hmm. Very different approaches this yeah. morning for the two. I really like what both of them are doing, unfortunately. It just hasn't worked out so far for Canterbury, but it will. Bill, I would love to know if around that one o'clock time period or 1230, we start to see some guys maybe move from lower on the lake to try to get around that current when they fire up two generators. I bet Will Davis got that in here. Yeah. 
playbook. The timing is all that matters. Absolutely. Will Davis currently in fourth place, as you can see. Look at unofficial uh, leaderboard right there, courtesy of Bass Track and Brandon Polnick, two-time angler of the year. Right on top, Bernie Schultz, the veteran, having a good season here. Brian New. Uh, out of South Carolina now and doing a little better, it would seem. <laughs> so uh, a lot of ch lots of changes, lots of places to turn it around on this nine tournament schedule. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Our 104 anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series uh, getting into their fourth hour of fishing on day number one. Going by pretty quick here at Lay Lake, Shelby County, Alabama for the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite here. Been waiting for a long time to get the elites to uh, famous, famous, legendary Lay Lake. Legendary in BASS history for sure. Let's get out to Brandon Cobb. What a year he is having. I don't think he's very big, but I want to catch him. He's a little bit bigger. A lot bigger than one of them in there. Ooh, you're ugly. Spitting out crawfish. You're confused. You ate a white chatterbait spitting out crawfish legs. Good call. Yeah, spit out a crawfish leg. I caught him on a white chatterbait. <laughs> little guy, but. Than the other little guy. Yep. Go back to sardine calling again. Those crawfish oh, claws gosh. are about as hard to digest as I'm the chatterbait would be. Yeah, it takes a little while. See. <laughs> Pure cartilage. One, two, three. They're all little enough. I don't have to get that specific, but. The eyeball is going to be hard on these little guys. Brandon Pollock called, called up to 17 <laughs> pounds. We'll just call that one. In about wow. a pound and a quarter. Wow. Mm. Where are you at? A little more sight fishing going on, I think, than maybe you we think? anticipated. It, well. I knew it would be a little, but it, just looking at Bernie and Brandon, we saw Will Davis. I mean, some guys definitely side fish. There we go, Canterbury. Not looking for his third keeper. That's going to be it. Barely got it, too. But that hook gets him good. Number three, another little guy. Pound and probably, I don't know, little. Pound and a quarter. Pound and a quarter. Not a big one, Davey, but you know the importance of being in the game. <laughs> so if you have a couple pound and a quarters, pound and a half, two pounders, if you are one five pounder from being in the game, then you know that like you need to have, you know, those are very important. One five pounder and Scott Canterbury is in the game. Right back in it, yep. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. You just three pounders help me. Harry just got in the top 10, and David Mullins got over 10 pounds with a three pounder. He's 11th. Will Davis back out. Back on the same spot where you are schooling fish. You've got another one here. Got him going, I think. Good one, too. Look like. Oh, no. They got two of them. Almost look like he's got mm, two on there. Yeah, no. Could be. Had a double at Lake Murray on a jerk bay. We'd love two to see it. Look at this two. Oh God, don't come off. Two of them. Two good ones. Sure there he is. Oh God, don't come off. Oh God. Oh, this Big is what happens. Off. You see, you'll come off. Mm. Oh. Came off. That's exactly what happened to me at Murray. <laughs> exactly. 
Hindsight's 2020. I, if I had to do over, I'd swing him. I you think that's what he should have done there. Yeah. I don't know which one came off the bigger. Or the Always smaller. the bigger one. Yeah. Always the bigger. There wasn't nothing I could do. Not with two of them on there. See right here. We found her. Both of those fish on and both good ones. Dude, that one was a one a little bigger than the other. Oh, no right dip net in these Bassmaster tournaments allowed, so it's you got three sets of treble hooks and two bass, what do you do? Ah. Well, just lose the big one. That's yeah. what Davey that usually does. Yeah. <laughs> Swing him, that's, that's the thing, right? Yeah, yes, I, I think so. That sounds just logical. Because if you, you know, the more they're pulling yeah. against one another and you're yeah. trying to get, and there's really no way to right. grab two and still yeah. have control of your rod and reel, sure. so. And that's right, I mean, you, the only guaranteed way to keep pressure on both of them is yeah. to swing them, right? Well, and that's the, it's like the leverage debate. When you have a big magnum spoon fish, the more that they're fighting, the more leverage they have to throw it. And when they're fighting against each other, that's yeah. even more leverage, so. Yeah. Said it was three yeah. pounder, that'll give them a pound call though, almost. Will Davis moving up. Sitting in third right now. Pretty educated in this creek, though. <laughs> A little bit better. Oh yeah. In about ten minutes. Very Double his catch. Mm -hmm. Doesn't take long. See a lot of these anglers. Moving away from the grass after the shad spawn, I heard a lot of the anglers say, man, we starting too late in the morning, those fish, the shad spawn will be gone. But a lot of those largemouth do not just go out in the abyss after the shad spawn. They hunker down under this vegetation and that's what Canterbury's, you know, targeting, trying to Pound fish for those oil. fish that are staying up there in that shallow vegetation. You see he missed some or didn't get as many bites on a swim jig, moving it through that stuff, but now he's slowing down and pitching to it and flipping to it. And might take longer, but he's being a lot more efficient on it. Yeah. You can almost guarantee if you get one in a in a mat or a little portion of grass, there's probably another one or two. Or in Cobb's case, 27. Yeah. It's really amazing. That was a small little clump of grass where he caught all those fish this morning. That's four. 112 on that last keeper for Canterbury. Now he's right where you mentioned, you know, he's got four. One swing of the bat. Not big yeah. ones, but four keepers and a five pounder. And he's right there where we thought Scott Canterbury would be. I think, I think it's just like what, to put it in other sports terms, Steve Kerr with the, with the Golden State Warriors last night. He just kept preaching in the huddle. Let's keep hitting singles. Let's keep hitting singles. Let's do the little things right just one at a time because we are capable of home runs and we just need to buy time till we hit a home run. We'd love to have three guys on base when you hit that home run, you know, and Canterbury puts a couple two pounders in there and then a five comes That's along. Right. He's in the top five and nothing, no one's the wiser that it was a tough day. The small jobs are important. Yeah. It's like the big job. What's the old advice your coach or your teacher would always give you? If you think you're too big for the small jobs, you might be too small for the big jobs. <laughs> yeah. It's my parents always preach that. If I can't trust you to take the trash out, how am I going to expect exactly. to watch the house for the weekend? No, or you, no know, you can't do no, that. How are you going to how are you going to progress if you yeah. can't? At the time, I just thought they just didn't want to take oh, the trash yeah. out. You know. Yeah. Good way to trick you into taking the trash out. <laughs> it's a trash job. It's always at 11 o'clock at night, and I was afraid of the dark. You know, somebody boogeyman was going to get me when I was little. The boogeyman. Yeah. <laughs> Smallest limit we got is Chris Johnson. Five fish for six pounds, two ounces. Biggest is one five on Bass Track. Think they're thinking about the smallmouth swing yet? today? Oh, no <laughs> doubt. Up a little bit. I cannot, for whatever reason, the spotted bass out on those shoals and stuff, they just do not want to bite this morning. And I'm going to see if I can catch a couple of them. 
try and let this sun get up before I go down there and really large my fish. I've got some stuff going on down there on in the lake, but it's I need the sun to position them fish, what I'm doing. And so far today has been not what I expected. I figured I would catch five, two and three quarters of three pounders pretty easy. And it uh it hadn't happened. I do have five, but it has been a grind. Thin cloud cover has lingered on this morning all day, and we do have, I think, still suits, right? Some storms expected. This yeah, afternoon. later or today they've kind of they were expected, but possible. They were supposed to come around one, anticipate now it's moved back to about four. Oh, okay. But it's not well, going to get won't. sunny like he was hoping. It said mostly cloudy all day. Okay. Will Davis is liking the mostly cloudy just fine, throwing top yeah, water, no hooking two at a time. He is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah. Interesting to hear Matt Heron with how tough practice was. We knew probably 60 pounds, 15 a day would be a great number to have. And the fact that he was shocked he didn't have that with knowing there wouldn't be much water generation tells me he was on something special. Maybe when that water kicks on, we'll see a couple of those coals he needs. Clifford Perch just got one of those and got in our top 10. Another guy that might be sight fishing, he does like yeah. to do that. Take a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now, and there's Brandon Polinick. He's got a five and a half pounder of the boat. The power of a, of a five plus is undeniable on this body of water here, as Davey pointed out. Bernie Schultz, the, the one bigger than that, a 512, I believe, in his, in his limit there. Yes. Will Davis, uh, a little bit more uniform size in his live well, and on down the line there. Our coverage continues here. We're going to step back here in the uh, studios, the uh, Bassmaster Studios sponsored by Marathon for an hour for live mix, and then uh, Dave Mercer will return at noon Eastern time. Anxious to see who he's recruited to replace his partner here, Davey Height. And it's gonna be good. I bet it's gonna be good. I think you might have called trip well, then I That's, hope so. I anyway. was hoping that was what was happen would happen. It's been great being with you this morning on Bassmaster Live. Some good stuff from Lay Lake and more to come. Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Progressive Insurance, and by Rapala. These dudes. These dudes are, have left or something. That or they've all been caught in practice. Somebody just came down through here and caught them. Give me a sign here, guys. Why is this place beating up on me so bad this morning? It's kind of amazing not to get bit in all this.
I'll tell you what, that will put you on some antidepressants almost. How that many come up to when you can't get one to buy? to pull the ear on this. What a cluster. Better change this, bro. Triple I. Hey guys. Uh, 
I don't know what's wrong with these fish. You think it was some kind of major front or something come through here? Cause Get out of here. You know how many are probably sitting under that clump right now? Just. It's been so much more entertaining though than I expected. <laughs> They're tiny ones, but. But the thing is, I honestly thought there was a better chance to zero than there was catch eight pounds. <laughs> kind of weird. Figure I'd catch them, catch 12, 12 pounds or not get a limit. Still blowing up on that other clump now. It's so hard to leave this. That's a good one. Get in the boat. <laughs> much better. Much, much better. Three pounder. <laughs> that was a cool bite. I'm gonna do a beam. Bounce beam me like that. There we go. Oh, that was pretty obvious. That's that one that's a lot bigger than. Number six is a little bit bigger. What's this? <laughs> About the same. I think I'm gonna keep two. <laughs> It was a very, very good upgrade. See, I told you, I felt like there's bigger ones in there. I think that thing smashed it too. He just... Hey, now we're moving up. Now we're getting there. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do now though? I hadn't really had any bites on this jig. This is the little hook jig. Little hook jig ain't it. 
catch good ones. I'm putting my bigger hook jig on, same jig. We got in a special care package here from Greenfish. That hook, we'll get them. I flex that hook a little bit on that hook set. That's the open water swim jig, not the grass swim jig. I threw that spot 10 times before that son of a gun bit. Might make me fish those other ones again with swim jig. trailer in here. Yep, knew that wasn't a one pounder. We got the whole big hook now. You gotta worry about it. I did throw one out right before I make a cast. I'm 99% sure. Oh God, why are you upside down? What's, what you doing? Don't do that. Y'all right. still good? Yep. All right, let's catch another one. That was fun. Kind of glad he bit this, not a wacky worm. Been way scarier on a wacky worm. A swing and a miss. He did not look like a big one though. As y'all can tell, we ain't spotted bass fishing anymore. Come on, fish.
Oh, that ain't good for it. That ain't good for it. Hey, I know a guy. He won't be proud of me for doing that though. Oh, or that. I have to take it to the body shop. I'm gonna try something. I didn't, I wasn't gonna do this, but I am. Won't take just a second to run back here and see if it's, I can't tell if it's gotten dirty or not. I mean, it's dirty, but how dirty? That is the question. Dirty? Sir? Dirty? No, the biggest thing I'm looking at is the flow coming around, this thing's flowing hard, which means they got rain. They got a lot of rain. So this creek is flowing like crazy. If they got the kind of rain I think they've gotten, the lake's gonna come up. Or should, unless they go to pulling a fire out of it. Yeah, it's really pulling. I don't know whether they're dropping this lake or that's current coming in out of this creek. Something, something's up. I mean, there's a lot of water coming. I was watching radar last night and I knew they'd gotten like five, five plus in, radar indicated. A couple of those cells had put, put out about five inches of rain. This ain't happening. We gotta roll. We have got to roll, brother. It's gonna get crazy. Cause we're gonna get out. I think that is that the ounce or come on, fish. Be good to me.
fishing or not biting. I don't think it's gonna make a difference, but I'm gonna go to a little bit darker jig with this guy. I don't think it's gonna make a difference, but we'll find out. Yeah. Dang, paramedics.
one of the most amazing things about this classic is the fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that crowd. It is for the fans. <laughs> Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family. You're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is a giant bass! All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Gussie gets it done! Yeah, you can't see them because it's windy, but yesterday it's just this whole pocket is uh, brim beds. They're all like doing that little circle weight thing out in the middle of it. It's pretty nice. We're supposed to start building our house this summer. Supposed to. No, it's, uh, well, we're really near the lake, actually. But, no, it's just on, like, a, my dad lets build on our, his land, like, like, 160 acres. So it'd be nice. He shot a turkey in my house clearing right the last day of the season. <laughs> We're supposed to start building summer, but I told Amy I didn't want to have to mess with it in fishing season, so we can start, start in season if she'll deal with it. Other than that, we'd have to wait. I forgot I found a four pounder on bed yesterday. I need to go look and see if it's still there. I forgot about him. He looked really impossible to catch, but maybe he's more happy today. All right, that was over the bulk of the brim beds. I'm not going all the way back there through all this grass and crap. Didn't get a bite out here, I'm gonna control back out. There's, it's kind of crazy, it's like to me, how many weird different types of grass there is. Like, yeah, just like, 
I mean, stuff you wouldn't even think would be out here. Like, you go in some creeks farther up the lake, it's a whole bunch of lily pads. Like, I don't, I, Clint said what it is, so many people come from around the country to fish this lake. Yep, they, like it's on their boat, and that's why there's so many weird types. That's what, yeah, because this is like, you know, there's so many tournaments from everywhere. All right, yeah, let's get out of here. Might go fish a couple stretches of main lake grass, just make sure I'm not seeing. Nobody is biting. All right, dude. It's bad when I have the spinning rod out and can't get them to bite. You and I are about to be moving again. Dead after it. We'll see if he eats it. Three of them right there. Not biting a thing. You guys have gotten too smart for me. It's crazy, like, they darted on it straight to the bottom with it. Not a bite. Too smart for their own good. Drop the stupid minnow on him right quick before we leave. Right on top of him. That probably doesn't make things better.
They know the drill. All right, time to roll. This ain't good. 11 o'clock. <clears throat> one of these here is going to be the magic dog. Yeah, I ain't fishing but one more. Well, I might as well fish the other one too, but I just I can't get comfortable. Like, I don't know what it is. It's the weather. I mean, they've been biting better than this all week. I know you just gotta, I mean, I'll bump into some. No doubt in my mind, I'll bump into a few, but it ain't good. Can't be just on docks in one place. The Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Welcome in all our viewers watching all around the world to the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lake at Lay Lake here in Shelby County, Alabama. This is day number one and it's always on day number one. 104 anglers battling it out on a much smaller fishery than we're used to seeing on the Bassmaster Elite Series. But here's a guy that we're used to seeing on the Elite Series. Our tournament leader, Brandon Polnick, with 17 pounds three ounces by his standards 2023 has been a little slower than usual well had a good event last week and backing it up with another great event here 17 pounds three ounces brian new another angler that is trying to repair a tough tough season he's in second place but unfortunately no davy height here this week davy height Bass Fishing Hall of Famer not joining me here this week. So how do you replace one Hall of Famer? Well, you bring in another, and we learn that Bass... Oh, let's have a hug, Trip. That was a little awkward. <laughs> uh, the, band, the band's back together, man. That's right. Yeah. And we learned that Bass isn't much different than the mob. You thought you were out, but we pull you back in, and in the great state of Alabama. It's good to see you, Trip. How's things been? It's been great, and it's great to be here. I mean, I'm... Just downstream on Lake Jordan, which is two lakes down, and uh, love Lay Lake, love Shelby County, and it's exciting to see this event and see what's going to unfold this week. 
this event, and it's hard to believe that we haven't been on Lay Lake in 14 years since wow. the Bassmaster Classic. When you heard Lay Lake on the schedule, what was your first thoughts about this event this time of year? Depended on the weather. You know, nobody knew that we were going to have summer in, in January, and the fish started moving up, spawning in January, February, and then we had a, a real, real harsh cold front in March, kind of knocked them back. But it's it's got everything kind of in between, you know, and if you heard a lot of anglers, and if you read on Bassmaster.com, Doc Talk and all that, a lot of anglers talking about this. You've got a shad spawn early in the morning on the Coosa River. You always do. Uh, but they're not taking off to 6.30, so they lose a little bit of that. There may be a few fish spawning. They'll probably get picked off today. And after that, it's that transition. Fish are moving off the bank back out into uh, deeper water on the ledges. A lot of good ledges on, on Lay Lake, on the river. And current is a huge factor. It's funny. I was watching live this morning. I was watching live this morning, and, and the, the jig swimming deal, it as far as I'm concerned, started right here on Lay Lake. Guys like Chris Dill and Larry Bingham and, and Matt Heron was on the front end of that and one of the best jig swimmers around. And it was hard to beat Matt 25, 30 years ago. And then I turned on live this morning. He's up below Logan Martin Dam fishing in the current kitchen spot. So uh, there he is now flipping shallow water. But, but a lot of great Alabama anglers, Scott Canterbury, and, of course, Will Davis I've known – Will's dad, William, fished against him forever, the owner of Davis Jigs. And um, so those guys are catching them. Well, Matt Heron has a 10-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. Would love to win the Elite Series event. A lot of people on that list. But let's catch everyone up, trip with our Toyota Midday Report and see what's been going on on this fabled fishery that is Lay Lake. Your Toyota Midday Report starts with somebody that uh, is an Elite Series rookie but has made every cut this year, David Gaston. Having a great year. And there's a, a jig swimmer coming up there. And I, I don't know David. I know of him. And uh but having a great year. David Gaston has made every 50 cut this season and uh, very familiar with Lay Lake, 26 years old. And he's one you're going to have to deal with for years, but none bigger than the C-O-double-B, your progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader, Brandon Cobb. This guy's on fire. And, you know, it's, it, he's fishing grass, and I heard him say he caught like 10 fish out of that one grass bed all on a wacky worm. Uh, but... He's had a great year. It's been so much fun to watch this year, uh, especially at Okeechobee, that one huge day, and then uh, last tournament at Santee. But a uh, phenomenal fisherman. Great angler. And actually, I heard him say on live a little earlier, he said, I thought it was a more realistic shot of me zeroing today than me weighing in eight pounds. That's not something you're used to hearing from your angler of the year leader, but Brandon Cobb having an incredible season and Matt Heron high on fantasy yeah. fishing picks coming into this event, Trip Weldon. There he is catching spots up below Logan Martin. And, and you heard him talk about current seams and, and you know, those guys learned those spots and he, you heard him say there's all kind of fish down there. It's just a matter of getting them to bite. But uh, current uh, from Alab generated by Alabama Power it plays a huge part on the Coosa River anytime you're fishing. Oh, don't look too far because here he is, your defending Bass Nation national champion, Will Davis Jr., having an incredible year. And he knows this place really well, Trey. He does. He, like I say, it's Dad William, uh, great people, great anglers. And uh, yes, Will is, he's on fire, man. He's, he's a great young angler and he's a super dude. I really like Will. And here he is doing his thing on his home pond, Lay Lake. Will Davis Jr., having an incredible season. And things just get better when you're on your home pond in your rookie season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. But you better have a big season because our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year leaderboard is full of anglers. Not just at one point we used to say, well, if you get real lucky and you make the classic, you might win Rookie of the Year. Not anymore. I mean, they're all threatening for Angler of the Year. Yeah, these guys are hammers. And, uh, you know, uh, Will and, and David, they come off – the Coosa River right here on Lay Lake, uh, where there are a bunch of hammers, trust me. <laughs> Those guys, these guys, you can go on uh, 
Facebook, the Central Alabama Bass Tournaments, and there's a tournament out of beeswax right here every day. And as we move into the summer, every night. So these guys fish. <laughs> they fish all the time. Live on the water right now with David Gaston. And the unique thing about both Will Davis Jr. and, and David Gaston is you got a lot of Elite Series pros who have a lot of experience here. But then you join the Elite Series and it pulls you away from here and, and you lose experience. They've been fishing tournaments on a weekly basis, as you say, right up till making the Elite Series, which was just, you know, four events ago. Right. Those guys, you know, fish Alabama Bass Trail, Airport Marine, those uh, bigger tournaments. And you're right, guys like Clint Davis and, and Matt Heron, they've been on the road. They don't fish lay that much. But these guys are in tune to lay. They know what's going on. And they know all those sweet spots. You see David, he's out there throwing a shaky head okay. or jig or something on an offshore deal. Well, I bet that gum's getting on there and rise. I was just chewing. I just remembered that. Really? You, Dave, I look at Canterbury flipping grass right there. To me, there's always been just two grass beds on Lay Lake. One on the west side and one on the east side. I mean the whole lake, other than a couple of bluff uh, walls down river, is solid grass. So if you like fishing grass, flipping grass, and that sort of deal, then you're going to like Lay Lake. And those fish, I heard David saying he's right. I mean, it, it can be August. There's fish living in this grass year-round. It's just a matter of getting them to bite. But uh, punching and a lot of uh, frog fishing, uh, I'm sure chatterbaits out in front, swim jig in the mornings, you know, that's that's the deal here. While listening to the Bassmaster podcast with Kyle and Ronnie, I heard Canterbury say he's going to try fish this tournament like four individual events every day. Is it, is it one day tournament? They had uh, Airport Marine had a big tournament here Saturday, and it took twenty two pounds to win. There were a lot of fish caught, but like I say, those guys are straight up hammers. Uh, that fish that circuit in the same way with Alabama Bass Trail. But a lot of them are right here in this grass, uh, flipping, punching, that sort of deal, swimming a jig. And then you got the spot guys that really know where to go out there on that offshore thing. And, yes, you know, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's been a... Uh, uh, lays only 12,000 acres. Super slow day. And I think it's been the slowest day I've had all week. And I've ran, like, some really good stuff that... You know, I had some bites on in practice, and it just I can't get bit. I mean, I didn't actually fish this in practice, but it's usually pretty good. Just a thick mat, and uh, I hadn't had any bites. I've got four little fish, so I got to keep moving around. I don't know. Try to figure it out. There's, there's going to be an opportunity, a window today, where you can get some bites. You don't need, I mean... I'll be happy with anything in the teens. So all you got to have is a few bites. I mean, there's big ones in here. Just I hadn't been able to get it going. It's been pretty slow. My guess, Dave, Sunshine would help that bite. Well, what I was going to say about it is being a 12,000 acres, you know, by elite standards, that's a small lake. But with forward-facing sonar, these lakes are getting bigger and bigger. And I think you'll see that play later on in the week. A lot of fish have, have spawned, moving offshore, and they're following bait, especially spots. And uh, somebody's going to capitalize on that, I think. Maybe even Scott Canterbury, because as he said, he's fishing four different one. You know, I mean, I took from that that he's just yeah, basically going to burn areas so down far. and move on. It's amazing that, you, like you say, the few areas that there is to fish here, to grass, the way he's fishing, it's amazing with the amount of pressure that it gets that you still catch as many fish here. There must be an incredible population on this lake. There is a great population. Uh, um, years ago, uh, Mark's Outdoors, they used to do a stocking program yeah. in the mornings. You'd take off and you'd release you know, a bag of bass, and I don't know what effect it had on it. Uh, there's pro people can argue both sides of that but 
But uh, there's just a lot of bait in this Coosa River system. There are a lot of fish here. It gets a lot of pressure, as you say. But uh, it's just it's a great fishery, great spotted bass fishery. Uh, you know, they're going to catch them this week. It's not going to be Lake Murray. I mean, Lake Murray was incredible. You know, guys said it was like yeah. being in an aquarium. And, and uh, it was, in, but Lake Murray is a whole lot bigger than Lake Lake, too. Scott's one of those guys. He grew up. Finish your thought, Trip. Well, Scott's one of those guys that grew up fishing the Coosa like Swindle. Swindle used to fish down here a lot. And uh, I remember uh, Gerald's dad, Tommy, I fished against him for years. And uh, those guys, you know, they sometimes it's tough to run history. Uh, but also it may be good and they know where to go, you know, to get a bite. Speaking of where to go, they're an aerial view of how our anglers with cameras are spread out over this fishery. Does that shock you, or is that about what you would have expected? That's what I'd expect. Clint's right there above Walks of Hatcher Creek. Uh, no, I'd expect them to be from dam to dam. Because it's good, really, from one end to the other. From his location on the map, out live to Clint Davis right now, currently in 67th place, I think with three fish. Now, I think what typically happens um, the lower end, the fish spawn first. Grinding away. I mean, I lower don't end. really have an update. I've, I've stopped on a lot of places that have fish, <laughs> and uh, they're not firing for me. I mean, they, you can't, they can't hide with all the electronics these days. I mean, I know they're there, but, I mean, I have not even got one to bite, so... Clip went to school at Montevallo on the Montevallo fishing team. He's fish lay all his life. Really fished the entire Coosa. I see him down on Lake Jordan sometimes. Oh, the plan was to catch 12 to 14 pounds in about 10 minutes on our first stop. And then fish grass the rest of the day. All right, what? What's really mind blowing to me is I've got two other places that I know they're on now. One of them's got a hundred bass laying on it. Nobody was fishing it and they will not bite. I mean, when you get the spinning rod out and there's that many fish there and they won't bite, it is not good. There's one right here. I promise you, there's one right here. The old cliche, cliche, I know you hear it all the time, Dave, grind, but it it has turned into a grind. And it's, it's uh, oh, this is gonna be one tournament, four or five pound fish is gonna carry you a long way. And it's also a tournament where you you can have a great day and make up a bunch of ground. Yeah. Frustrated you know, it was hard to, to do day. it in some of those other tournaments. Do me like this. That's about as bad as I thought I could possibly do right here. I mean, of course, you could always have zero, but I don't have much. I've got one fish that I don't mind weighing in. Three box with our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader atop that three box, Brandon Cobb. And two pre-tournament favorites, Clint Davis and Scott Canterbury. But there's a look at our unofficial leaderboard at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. And Brandon Polnick is your tournament leader. Brian New having a breakout event after a tough, tough season. Seeing Steve Kendi in sixth place, that's going to be someone you got to deal with all week, yep. isn't it, Trip? Oh, absolutely. An incredible top 10, 104 anglers fishing today and tomorrow. The top 50 make it into semifinal Saturday and the top 10 fish on championship Sunday. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. My name is Will Davis Jr. I'm Elite Series rookie. Um, we're at stop number five at Lay Lake. 
Real fortunate that I live pretty close to here. It really fishes in like sections. It's gonna be a grind of a tournament. The fish are all stages right now. Some are still spawning, brim beds are out. I think we're gonna be in for a treat. This is gonna be a uh, tough, uh, tough event if you can't capitalize on the shad spawn early. I think that I have to fish some history and then I also have to, uh, you know, look for new stuff. Like I look for a lot of brush piles this week. Besides that, you know, I've looked for spawners this week and I found two or three of them, but um, like I said, we're, we're missing, you know, that deal by about two to three weeks. So it'll be interesting. Well, sounds like Will Davis did a great job predicting this event because it's working out great for him. Currently in fourth place at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. And Tripp, um, he talked about the lake fishing in sections, and that seems to be something I hear quite often. Yeah, I think he's right on point. I mean, uh, as I said earlier, down the lake is more, I don't know, there's some bluffs and stuff down the lake, but that water clears and those fish uh, spawn first, and then you get mid-lake, and you got a lot of creeks and grass beds and humps and stuff like that, and then up the lake is straight river, and and that really hinges on current. So uh, hey, we're back. if anyone would know, we would know, because okay. he grew up yeah. fishing this pond. I have got to catch a bigger fish, and. Kind of alternating it up. I've struggled this week with largemouth. I had a few decent bites, but I couldn't get the spots going this morning. Caught a lemon of them, but not the quality that I need. We're going to roll the dice that we can catch us a four or five pound largemouth this afternoon down this lake. I hope we can anyway. Oh, Matt, uh, Will lives in Sylacauga. When I was fishing against Matt 25, 30 year, years ago, that's where he lives, Sylacauga. He was a hard man to beat here. And I don't know if he was as grumpy then as he is now. We like to call him <laughs> <laughs> old grumpy dog. He'll, he'll get me for that. But. I asked him if that bothers him, and he's like, nah, no. Well, I've had, he said if it really bothered me, I'd Water's change. Water's been really, really low all week. <laughs> You could get a bite on a dock. I normally don't fish docks on this lake. With the high skies and the low water, these shallower fish kind of gravitated toward that. There's Water's a weather trying day. to rise, it is but it still, still needs to come up a little bit. It's getting straight up summer weather, you know, uh, humid. Warm afternoons, thunderstorms in the evening, just a typical summer pattern. I mean, we went like 10 days ago, we had 40 degree nights. We went from cold nights to summertime real quick. And those fish, they don't, they don't last long, buddy. They start heading out. It's going to heat up every day this week, as you see in our TH Marine Weather Watch Championship Sunday, 91 degrees. Wow. Just exactly what a pasty, pale Canadian, like, <laughs> tournament MC like myself wants to hear. <laughs> Heron currently in 10th place, unofficially, with 11 pounds, 6 ounces. He's another one of those guys that, man, he has knocked at the door so many times. It, an elite series title has to be in his future, and it, and it, it may be this week. Could be. You know, Matt and Gerald, they've, they've come close so many times to hoisting that blue trophy, and, and uh, I'm pulling for those guys, you know, to do that someday because I've known them forever. You know, Matt and I are big Alabama Crimson Tide buddies. We used to we got mosquitoes flying. text a lot back and forth when I was still working about, about our football team. Where's always time for a roll tide? Trip, give me a roll tide. Oh, roll tide, baby. You know, I'm, I'm sure Davey has told you when when uh, George Cochran beat Davey uh -huh. back in in that August tournament. I mean, Cochran was way back in Bully Branch uh, in three feet of water. It was hot. Oh, the water temperature had to be in the 90s. 
And uh, my mind's in about it didn't take a whole lot to win that event here, either. I think. So you hear what he's saying. That's history, man. That's that's a that's a battle you have to fight uh, in your mind, uh, fighting that history. Let's see. Uh, 20 years ago, it got like this, and I caught one I know, yeah. fish dock. down there at Paint Creek off that one dock. Man, you I know. fished them in some, but generally speaking, that's not what I do here. You know, we're still, we're still in the middle of May, and there's a lot of fish that are still up very shallow. Bluegill spawns going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. When this water being so low as it's been all week long, what you know, fish are going to seek shelter. They're going to try to find some dark shade. Without there being a lot of depth on the grass, I kind of noticed it during the week that there was a few bites on docks, a few. And I actually had some decent bites. What I thought, I didn't stick any of them, but shaking them off, I mean, I had a couple of bites I thought were pretty nice fish. Right now, I'm just trying, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to go through the process of elimination, trying to figure out what. What they're doing, where they're doing it. I mean, the biggest thing. You can thing almost really see that need, battle it's a in his mind. There you go. We now interrupt this mental battle to bring you a bass. <laughs> you know, all he needs sometimes, these anglers, is, it, like I say, he's running that mental game, but catch one fish to clue you in and just Thank you. settle down, relax, and all that goes out to win and concentrate on what you're doing, keep a hook, got one time keep a bait wet. I think that's him, isn't it? I hope that's him. That's a good call. It ain't that one. It ain't that one. You can have all the mental battles you want, but a bass bite has cured many mental battles in another look at that right now. He talked about his line size this morning. He said, I'm not going to tell you what size it is, Thank so... I'll be interested, interesting to hear. That's I'm probably throwing different. stick bait. That's a, like a pitch and flipping yeah, setup. Uh, nothing special. You know, that home field battle, every time we see an angler deal with it, it just stands out to me how amazing what Lee Livesey has done in four, Jack, my line, two, two, sure. go back to back to dominate that event at home. And it's weird because a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, yeah, he's won all those events, but two of them were at his home lake. But you see this event door. after event, the pre-tournament <laughs> favorites, all that pressure and all that history is hard to deal with. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable what you say, what. Lee, you know, Fork's not that big a lake, and you put these caliber anglers Sometimes on there, you know, I don't and think he still it necessarily matters. You know, comes out on top like that. It is Sometimes really unbelievable. Bites has been really hard, and I don't want no shiny sinker right now, you know? And I've, when I set the hook, you see that's all an that old sinker I've been using for a while. Where a wheel is. When I set the hook, I and, uh, popped that board pretty good. And, it, uh, Will knows how to fish this current. Knocked trust all me. my paint off. I need to retie anyway, so we'll go ahead and. There you go. Hooked up. I shook that fish right there off yesterday. On command, just like that. Do not underestimate the powers of yes, Trip sir. Weldon. <laughs> hey, I've run up on Will and his dad wow. fishing blow these dams. They know what to do. It's a nice, like a nice spot. <laughs> I'd say. Look at that. 
see he's got his fly fist on you required by law within 800 feet of the dam to wear a PFD so you can take the tournament official away from the events but you can't take the tournament official out of the tournament director right Bingo. Or something like that Bingo. <laughs> Will Davis also one of those, I mean, we see it year after year, one of those really relaxed, mellow, you, you know, he doesn't, you don't see him ever get too, too excited. I mean, that is the key. I think if he were to design a pro angler, that you want, because if you think about it, of all the Hall of Famers, with the exception of Mike Iaconelli, there's not a spaz <laughs> in the bunch. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And I, I think it's, just in his DNA and his genes, his dad's a lot like that. And, uh, Will Will is a great young man. He, whenever you see him or if he sees you, he's gonna come up to you and speak. You know, it means a lot, especially to us old folks. You know, he spoke to me at the classic. He came across the room at the Hall of Fame reception that night, and uh, I had no clue he was there. He said, "I just want to speak to you," and I, I appreciate that. Very cool. Four box right now. Brandon Cobb, Will Davis, Matt Heron, and David Gaston. Heron earlier was talking about feeling like they were moving more water. We did have some storms last night. Brandon Cobb, one of the first things he said to me, he said, did you hear those storms last night? I did not. I was up late in the night watching hockey games. Um, but, <laughs> but I evidently was passed out at the time. But we did have a bunch of, of rain hit yesterday. Rising water, what will that? How will that affect this event? Well, Lay has a lot of shallow flats, you know, a lot of flat land, and uh, six or eight inches. If you heard these guys say, uh, makes a huge difference if you're trying to fish shallow. I pull it up. They were running ten thousand cfs out of uh, Logan Martin this morning. At, at, at two o'clock, they're going to cut on two wheels. They're running one wheel, so that current's going to crank up at two o'clock. So some of the late flight guys. Uh, could do well up there. But, yeah, in a shallow fishery like Lay predominantly is in all these shallow. You see all, I mean, look at it, it's flat. Yeah. And uh, six or eight inches can make a huge difference. A bad difference. I would say <laughs> it like that. It's always exciting to come here to the great state of Alabama, the birth state of bass, not too far from Montgomery, Alabama. And whenever you come here to Alabama, the locals get excited. They, look at there. There you go. We've got a Josh Strachner fan in the house. I, I, Maybe that's Josh's house. Who knows? Maybe. Don't sit on that, that swing. Josh, Josh is a great Coosa River angler, too. An incredible angler, a former Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year, but atop the leaderboard, 17 pounds, 3 ounces. The prodigy, Brandon Polinick, being chased down by a cast of characters, many of them from the great state of Alabama, and tied for six right now. Look at that, 12 pounds even, two of those great Alabama hammers, and that is Matt Heron and Steve Kennedy. Lots of fishing yet to come. Don't go anywhere. Always time for a roll tide trip. Give it to me. Well, roll tide. Look at old Bernie. Waiting to horse his first trophy. Yeah. A quarter. No way. Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. It is day number. Oh, who doesn't love a puppy? <laughs> The Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. I told you the locals were excited to have us around, and that little four-legged local is pretty excited here today. Day one of stop number five of the Bassmaster Elite Series. 104 anglers on the water, and we'll join four of them live right now. And once again, Will Davis Jr. is there. hooped up. That's a big one. Catch it. Uh, we saw him during the break catch a drum. That's big as I get now. Catching Alabama. a hybrid. That's what you catch below these downs, but it clues you in that the bait is there. So there are spots around there. 
just a matter of getting one to bite, getting it in the boat. What makes an angler good at that? What well, Will Davis is good. You said he's very good at this this style of fishing. What makes you good at that? A lot of time on the water there, obviously, but knowing the bait and knowing those little seams. And uh, he's probably, what the way he's fishing, he's seeing shad. Because they get up against those walls. And, uh, that was not no bass either. It's unnerving, I would tell you that, sometimes fishing up there because that current can be wicked. If it was, yeah. it was a full grown. I fished a tournament uh, on Logan Martin a couple of years ago, and there was a spot on the dam I wanted to get to, and I think Will and William stayed there all day. <laughs> we never did, Ben and I never got there, so. Tougher nails. Matt Heron currently in sixth place unofficially, but the Mercury move of the day, moving to the top of the leaderboard, Brandon Polnick. And as you can see, I mean, he started catching them early and often and uh, five fish limit by 947. And just moments ago, we looked over our shoulder trip and he there came flying past. Yep. Such an incredible angler, Dave. And he's, he's hoisting a classic trophy before too long. He's got that in his future, no doubt. Um, he's won just everything else. Federation, you know, uh, elites, uh, AOYs. So that classic trophy is, he's got his hands on it right now, I think. But he's just an incredible angler and a great guy. Great angler, and I know a classic will be in his future, and maybe another Elite Series title if he keeps catching them like that. But will our Clint Davis, Big Clint. earlier this week, we had a little bit of a miscue, I hear, in the fantasy fishing department where Will and Clint Davis were in different brackets, so they messed up the bracket somehow because they both have the same last name. But don't uh, mix anything up. Both Davises can catch him here. Clint Davis Whoa, just having a little yeah. slower day than he would have liked to this point. This would be fish number four for him. Putting up a good little tussle there. Two pounder, maybe. He was never number four. Off. Well, I'm sure he's glad to put. <laughs> hey, we have put a in the box right mouth. now. All right. So Clint looks like he's he's out on a ledge or somewhere like that. Uh, some of my favorite memories of fishing Lay Lake was coming up here with Dewey Kendrick. Because Dewey's dad uh, oh, lived on Lay Lake, and he was one There's of the first one. ledge guys, and he was great. Dewey Kendrick, also a Hall of Fame tournament yeah. director. I have it under good advice that Dewey did say to both Kevin Van Dam and Davey Height at the Hall of Fame, I never got a chance to DQ either of you. <laughs> While we check in on Brandon Cobb live, is there anyone you wish you had a chance to DQ, Trip? No. <laughs> Don't get me in that drama, my friend. All right, hook up here. Get in the boat. L little you bit know, Dave, there's probably maybe a, a fry guard there. There's probably That's the whole, a few fish it. still spawning and probably a, a good many fry guarders still around. I'm good. Towards or two and a half, something I like fished, that. Uh, oh man, my the buddy Phelps Langley and I fished down here then, about three off. weeks ago, and there was still a good many fish spawning. We caught a it's between these two, I think. Smallest fish, one four. We caught a male Very off the bed. It was a four pounder. That's a, that's a big male. 
Wow, it's good not, not female wouldn't stay still. Yeah. You know, there's some good fish on this pond. Bye bye, little guy. Got a transplant. Nice little cove. Kind of like how his season's been going. I mean, he keeps thinking that he's not really on anything, and guess what? He throws his little worm and ends up leading angler of the year. You know, by his own admission, I've, I've read oh, wacky worm hooks. seen where he said the, the, he doesn't do well, with, or he and Smallmouth don't get along that well. So, uh, Frazzled. After Sabine, things are fixing to, that pressure's going to ramp up, especially if he's still leading. No Progressive AOY. Oh, wow. in that hole, but I got it. She was there, wasn't she? <laughs> she was there. Brandon Cobb, not he just leading Progressive line. Bassmaster Angler of the Year standings, uh, he also took time to break down his top baits with your Bass Pro Shops top bait. <laughs> Brandon Cobb here from the Elite Series. We're at Stop 5 Lay Lake. It's May. It's uh, kind of postponed right before summer, not quite summertime yet, and there's a lot of shad spawning, things like that that's starting to happen, some mayflies, brim bez. One of my favorite baits when that's happening is a toad toter buzz bait. It's a greenfish tackle toad toter buzz bait. This is a buzz bait I actually designed. I made these in my garage for years and uh, decided to give my design to Greenfish Tackle so we could kind of copy my bait I've been making since I was 12 years old. This is uh, just a horny toad on a buzz bait where the lead goes fully inside. You skip under bushes, whatever. Throwing white here this week because of shad spawn, but green pumpkin if you're targeting fish eating brim, things like that is one of my favorite baits. Cover water in the post spawn, especially for those fish that just finished spawn or eating bluegills, shad up there around the mayfly hatch, eating bluegills on that. It's a great bait to cover water and catch those post, post spawn fish. That your Bass Pro Shops top lures and a great job, as you would expect, by the CO Double B Brandon Cobb. It is a this lot of fun to watch him throw that. Not Buzz bait running, skipping on her docks, which he's not doing now, worried. but I ran a bit still, I think he's shooting a wacky worm on there. But caught all those little ones, and now I'm just kind of trying to catch. There's, there's most of the fish are done spawning, but there's still a good many, just up shallow. Like some may be spawning, some are on brim beds, some are just kind of up there because they just finished. It's just still some fish shallow, and I'm trying to just kind of fish slow and pick one off here and there. Still, there's still just a remnant. Up shallow. It's definitely pretty tough. Brandon's but an incredible angler, and his saw some good ones swimming around his up demeanor here. Demeanor really plays into that, I think. Not too high, not too low. Bit of a weirdo, though. Does not is self-admittedly not a big forward-facing sonar guy, which people call computer game fishing. Yeah. But does stay up five, six hours into the night, way too late, playing video games. So loves <laughs> video games, but not video game fishing. That's that college life coming back to him. The dude can fish, so I mean, you know, we've seen it. I saw it before I retired, and uh, he is he is one fine angler. He really is. Represents his state well. Oh, every week he's on. Neil Paul is pacing back and forth, all excited. I'm sure Neil Paul's watching somewhere in the world. He is. I got a text from him. Our good friend Neil Paul next. from Anderson, South Carolina. Pretty much that's all we can do. Hiding with a good one. Mm. Talked to last night to another good South Carolina buddy. Sail Hemingway, and uh, he's doing well. Trip. Well, I'll say one thing. You, you've got this. Uh, you got this live thing figured out. <laughs> well, I've watched a lot of it, but I, let me say this before we go off. Uh, I admire what you guys do. People don't realize how hard y'all work, Dave. I know you're out here at takeoff. Uh, you're doing stuff during the day, whether it's 
or live or or other things and then you're going to come in here and, and uh, weigh fish for two hours and the guys back in little rock uh davy and ronnie and, and tommy sanders they just do a phenomenal job so uh it's been an honor to work with you guys and it's fun to be here working with you today and and uh i walked across the stage brought a little tear to my eye <laughs> but i'm enjoying my retirement too what 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 is the most what what have you been doing on your retirement give us an update here well, I do a lot of yard work. I have a garden. I uh, don't fish near like I used to. Uh, but Mary and I spend so much time together, and it's just great. It's a great, uh, great time in life. And uh, I go to a lot of uh, grandkid ball games, gymnastic events. So we stay busy. Well, that is what retirement is all about. And, and Tripp, honestly, I thank you so much for, for joining me to do this because uh, you know what? We miss you around here. I mean, you, you, and I've said it so many times. I'm like, Trip. When Trip left, I mean, the general left. That they, they, we're so used to in so many departments, just looking at you to see what we're gonna do. But man, nothing could make us happier than to find out that uh, you're enjoying retirement. And uh, is there any chance we could convince you to come back? Periodically, special guest appearance kind of stuff for Bass Live. Sure. No stress of being a tournament director. Don't worry <laughs> about that kind of stuff. You just come back and, and talk about people. And, and the best part is the people you're talking about hardly are ever listening. Oh, sure. I mean, I, this has been fun. But, uh, Dave, I love you guys. And, you know, I love you. And I had a, a great uh, connection on stage, I think. And so, and I think that goes back to our fishing roots. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, we we know a lot of what's in the heads of these guys, so don't may not have their talents. I certainly don't, but, but I know a lot of what they're thinking. So Yeah, it doesn't matter how long you've worked here, whether you're in the Hall of Fame, you're still a fan. Always. Here's the most amazing thing about Trip. Trip, what was the number long before Bass Live? Long before when people Long before even the TV show, people used to call a hotline to find out what place people were in in the tournament. Trip Weldon, what was that number? 272-9530. <laughs> that is amazing, and um, I don't know if that number's around anymore. You can try to call it if you wish. But, wow, what a tournament we have going here. The fifth stop of 2023, and that a live look of Will Davis Jr., your reigning and defending Bass Nation National Champion. But let's have a look at our Power Pole replay of the day, and guess who it is? Will Davis Jr., and he is feeling the comforts of home in a big way on day number one, catching them sometimes two at once. Yep, had two on there at one time. Will Davis Jr. having a great day, but today, just day number one. One and two, the entire field fishes 104 anglers. Then we cut it down to 50 for semifinal Saturday. Trip uh, Weldon, who is standing out to you on that leaderboard? Well, Pollock just called up. He was at 17 for a long time, so uh, he made a move, and the move he made helped out. Bernie Schultz in third place, and uh, good to see him atop the leaderboard. I mean, he's another one of those ones. You, you I mean, Trip, you'd love to see him win. Oh, yeah, it'd be great. Uh, Bernie and I go back. I think he started in 92, and I started in 91. So we go back forever. It is the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite. I hear the dinner bell ringing. It is lunchtime for us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back from the studio with those guys. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Bassmaster Live with continuing coverage. Day number one here at the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake. Shelby County, Alabama. We got the full field out there fishing today. Full field will fish again tomorrow and try to make it into the top 50 so they can fish on into the weekend and hopefully get to championship Sunday. There's our unofficial leaderboard right now, two times. Uh, progressive Angler of the Year, Brandon Polnick, on top of the leaderboard right now. Brian New, his closest pursuer, Bernie Schultz, 
fishing the Bassmasters for over 40 years. Is in third place right now, still looking for that first victory. Can he pull it off here? I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Will Davis, one of our super rookies, in fourth place, spending all day in the boat with him today. Jamie Hartman, haven't heard from Jamie up near those top echelons of the leaderboards in a while, but we would welcome him back for sure. He has certainly done some big things out here with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Our six whom we are following today, you can see them right there and how they are spread out over Lay Lake. All Oh, 40, 50 miles of it here, 12,000 acres on the Coosa River, right in the middle of the seven lakes that make up the chain here. Yeah, you can see there, uh, they, they are definitely spread out. Not a lot of acres, you, like you mentioned, Tommy, 12, only 12,000 acres, but a lot of shoreline because it, the Coosa River extends all the way uh, up to the back of Logan Martin. So about 45 miles or so. All right, how oh, yeah, some, four, between 40 and 50, I guess, yeah. I'm not talking much. Depends on if it's six inches low or full pool, right. Danny. That's right. <laughs> Catch a As you so well <laughs> described on the screen of knowledge. Will Davis at the Logan Martin Dam. Having a good day. Definitely uh, been able to see the knowledge young oh, Will so Davis good. has of Lay Lake, uh, he's been doing a lot of different things today. We're glad we got a camera mm -hmm. in the boat with him. Uh, started off fishing shallow vegetation with shad spawn and caught a few fish off the bed, caught a few fish on top water. Now he's up at the dam doing something totally different, looking for a big old spotted bass. Had a special little hidey hole he went into and caught a spawner. Hidey hole no more. We no all more. No, know where it's at. No, it's, it's a public hole now. Kind of cruised by there on my way back to South Carolina. <laughs> it's interesting, uh, Will Davis and Matt Heron, obviously a lot of knowledge here. And one started at the dam, the other wanted to wait till later in the day to go, go to that area. Different strategies with the time of day and the water flow. Could be a big difference in their flights, uh, what, how much time they have in the afternoon. Maybe For Matt sure. Heron not gonna have enough time to be up there at two o'clock. And our check-ins are three o'clock central, 3.30, four and 4.30 for the four flights. So you could be there feasibly for an hour or so before you gotta head back. Absolutely, it's supposed to run some water later. Yeah. Uh, Makes you faster yeah. on the way back down too. You can get back quicker, Dave. Some yeah. Plenty, plenty left, of, a lot of the story left to be written <laughs> during the course of this day here. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders here with the great Davey Height, the Hall of Famer, two-time classic champ, uh, two-time angler of the year, one-time classic champ, and Ronnie Moore as well, Mike Such Sukon joining in also, and, and Davey, we look at this afternoon period. I, 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 to me, they caught them better than I, and more frequently than I thought they would in the morning. Yet, down below, down at this 50 cut, it's not too early to start looking at that. Six nine will still get you into the cut. So that that's 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 pretty tough fishing right there. Yeah, you know we've talked about this morning that every tournament is is equal as far as points and making the classic or angler of the year, rookie of the year. But but really and truly. Events like this really separate, and you'll see some uh, really benefit. Like you see a Brian New up there in second place right now. He needs his good finish, but you'll see some anglers that have really been dialed in all year on that pre-spawn to spawn type situation uh, that that struggle here. So a lot of things are going to change, and I'm looking forward to see how the afternoon shakes out. The other thing, I don't think, I don't think anybody's out of it today if you've got at least five pounds or so. Yeah. I mean, you'll have guys, you know, we got Brandon Paulin, we got Brian, we got guys that that have what they need at least one day to have a chance to win this tournament. But then I don't think somebody's going to do that for four days in a row. You got to survive a few of those days. And unfortunately for some of the guys, maybe today is survival day. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, you mentioned to me a couple of days ago, you said one thing you've noticed about this, not everybody wants them to run that water. Not everybody wants them to turn it on, right? That's, a, that's not having it as an equalizing factor for some guys. Yeah, and seeing some guys, who, you know, it's just like the tidal guys. There are guys who want to run the tide and they're going to run back and forth down the, down the Potomac or the James River when the tide's going in or out and they chase the tide. Same thing can be said for 
for guys who are chasing the current flow. You run up to the dam when it's generating, and then you're running back. You spend an hour of time moving throughout your day. It's a waste. Some guys would just want to say, hey, there's grass in front of me. There's docks in front of me. Maybe some pockets. I'm just going to fish that mid lake portion, ignore the current, and I'm just going to figure out a way to catch them when there's no current. It also helps your positivity, Davey, if you know, hey, I'm not reliant. I don't get my hopes up one way or another. It could be positive for them. And I will say, every single Elite Series Pro has the ability to make a top 20, the skill to make a top 20 in an Elite event. It's the pros who have the ability to not get a bottom 20 are the ones that are in the angler of the year race. So these events where it's tough, eight pounds is in the cut line or nine and a half gets you in the top 50 after day one, something like that. Those are the ones that are backbreakers when you bring in three or four pounds. So the guys who can avoid that will be the ones who get through this event unscathed. All right. Well, we are, as we always have on Thursday and Friday, we're in the boat all day with about six of our anglers. That's the sampling we have. Uh, we're with uh, five Alabama anglers and one South Carolina angler. But let's look at our Yamaha midday report and see what these six anglers have showed us today, starting with David Gaston. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to watch all the anglers. David Gaston this morning uh, was a little bit pessimistic, maybe, about his chances. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it had a good start. Had that fish close to four pounds very early this morning. Got him going uh, just a few minutes after he did that interview saying, I might catch five two-pounders. Two I'd be doing great. But a lot better day, I think, than maybe he expected. Eight and a half pounds for David Gaston in about 27th place right now. And Brandon Cobb, our leader in uh, Progressive Angler of the Year points. Yeah, Brandon Cobb, uh, like you said, the leader of Angler of the Year. That's definitely why we have a camera with him. But not surprising at all to see Brandon Cobb right up there in the top 20 so far today unofficially because this is his kind of deal. He likes to put a trolling motor down. Like you said, Ronnie, he's one of those guys put a trolling motor down, fish what is in front of him, fishing some vegetation, fishing some boat docks, catching some on a wacky rig worm, throwing a frog, a buzz bait, doing a lot of different things. Swim jig, we saw him catch one on vibrating jig. He's just one of those guys who's going to keep his head down, and I expect to see him do well at the end of this event. He came into this tournament after four events, Tommy, with an 18-point lead, unofficially halfway through day one. It has ballooned to 70 points. The guys behind him, Good. Cook, Rivette, some of those folks below him, uh, are, are the, the distance is getting there. So if Cobb can carry a big advantage past the Sabina in the northern swing, we could see if fireworks for him. Another angler spent a lot of time, I mean years of time, on the Coosa River chain is Matt Heron. And Matt Heron uh, could, just didn't really get going until he got up near the dam. Near the, near the dam. Yeah, not a surprise to see Matt Heron up, up in this area, relying on the current, like you said, Ronnie. Some of these anglers have a lot of experience on the Coosa River. They know how to play the current, and they know where those biggest, bigger Alabama spotted bass will be. Mixed in with a few largemouth. We did see him catch one largemouth up there this morning. but. Matt Heron, uh, no surprise to see him doing very well this morning. Will Davis, Will Davis, as you mentioned, a fellow who's been doing a lot of different things during the course of today. His diversity and his knowledge of the place seems to be pretty much an encyclopedia of Lele. Yeah, it really is. To be so young, you mentioned that Bernie Schultz has been fishing bass bastard for 40 years. Will Davis is a long way from being 40 years on this earth, but a lot of knowledge you can tell here on the Coosa River. We heard Tripp talk about seeing him and his dad so many days out here on the river. I hope he hasn't shown us all the tricks he's got up his sleeve, because I think we'll have a boat with him again. And if not tomorrow, definitely Saturday. That's Correct. the one thing, Tommy. It, it, he's sampled so many things, like you said. He's going to have that all to his disposal tomorrow. How you manage that history, how you manage multiple patterns. Sometimes it spins anglers out. You can sample one or two Sorry. from the dam, one or two from a creek, one or two from the shad spawn. You might have a good event that could last you for four days of this event. Well, currently at the Logan Martin Dam, I mistakenly called it the Neely Henry Dam, where uh, when we were talking about uh, Matt Heron. That's where he is right now. And one of our surprises today, I think, uh, very appropriately a heavy favorite here, Scott Canterbury, still struggling. A little bit of a surprise, no doubt. He's made a big adjustment now where he's positioned on the lake. He's lived in that mid-lake portion, and now he's down south. Here we go. Definitely a help. <laughs> I need to backlash more often. A little bit better. Let's shed it all in there.
shed. They're all in there. I can't catch that little bitty one. Mm -hmm. Close to a pound. That to be. You got 64 limits right now. A little surprising. The smallest is Matt Robertson, who's got five for four pounds, 12 ounces. I don't think he weighed a fish the first two days of Sandy Cooper that were under 412. <laughs> <laughs> He might be small yeah. I am then. Yeah. I am yeah, them after yeah. Sandy Cooper Lake Murray though. He had the first two days ones, there. Uh, that still ain't a good one. Yeah. Some earlier action from Scott Canterbury. Really what he's doing and been doing all day is certainly no surprise. He was Start out on the shad spawn this morning, swimming a white jig. And you see him go to the thicker vegetation once the shad spawn kind of played out. Um, you just, with this time of the year when it's already been daylight for you know 30 minutes, 45 minutes uh, before the, a lot of these anglers, even the first group even starts taking off. Uh, if you make a wrong stop or two, uh, you just miss that early morning deal. And, and we saw some, you know, David Gasson catch a four pounder, you know. If Canterbury had made that stop, you know, a four pounder to what he's got, it changes everything. When someone has a four pounder in their hands and you still see plenty of rooster tails going up the river, yeah, that's gold. They're already behind the they're already behind the eight ball. Yeah. Davey, were there, you know, when you were in coming up the ranks of the top one hundreds and making the elite series and early in your career, is there a part of the country that just generated pros more than others? Because we see the Coosa River's got seven or eight pros within 30 or 40 minutes of a Coosa River Lake, maybe even more than that, but they call the Coosa River home. And then we've got another six or seven, like at Lake Norman, you got Airy and Queen, LaHue, Cherry and Williams. It's seen, those aren't the, the best bodies of water. I mean, it might take 20 pounds to win at Norman, might take 20 pounds to win on the Coosa, but they're grinder places, and yet, you know, half a dozen Baker's done in pros from those two bodies of water total. It's a great question because uh, honestly, when I got was fishing Bassmaster events early on and got to, you know, those were invitationals and we'd pair up with people from different parts of the country. There were great, great fishermen in this area and there were very, very few people fishing full time professionally on the Bassmaster tournament trail from this area. And it, it stood out to me like, wow, there should be more hammers from right in this area because there are a lot of great fishermen and now it is just the opposite. There is a large number for a small area of the country from this Coosa River area. Yes, if you can figure out how to catch 12 or 13 pounds every day, Tommy, at your home lake and there are lakes like this, then you can translate that across the country. That's right. If, you're, if your home field is 375 to the foul poles and 420 in the middle, you hit home runs there. Man, you're going <laughs> to kill them when you get to these, yes. these easier That's places. I like that <laughs> short corner in Fenway, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's your unofficial uh, standings as it stands right now with plenty of fishing time left in this day. Brandon Polinick, man on top with over 18-3. Brian New, Bernie Schultz, Will Davis, Jamie Hartman, Matt Heron, Steve Kennedy. He's kind of lurking in there as well. We'll have to watch for him also and the rest of these guys when we continue. The Waterbreaker Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. So great to be with you at Bassmaster Live, all this live coverage from Lay Lake. First time ever for the elites at Lay Lake. Of course, so much history here. And speaking of very recent history, the last hour, great to have Trip Weldon doing a cameo appearance there and so, sort of filling in for Davy. Davy, we can only lure him into the studio very, very few times during the year. But uh, somehow Dave Mercer and uh, got Tripp to come up and did a great job. It's great to hear he's so much experience on this lake. He lives two lakes down, and so it was a natural. It worked out very well. We appreciate Tripp being here. Tripp, uh, 
won't admit this, certainly not on camera, but he's been known <laughs> for many years to be one of the best on the Coosa River chain. Oh, man. Right through there, Lay Lake, Jordan. I, I heard that's why he's retired, so he could start to earn. He's earning more money now that he's retired from bass because he's he, winning local tournaments. But no, he's, he's cutting grass, making more money. He's not even fishing the local <laughs> oh, tournaments. Oh, is he cutting? <laughs> <laughs> no, trip. Uh, it was great fishing. seeing him at the Classic this year. Yeah, that's it right. was. Not an easy job being tournament director. All no, through the I, years. I would imagine that's one of the enjoyable things about retirement is yes. to deal with some of those headaches. <laughs> Who's the headaches, on. Tommy? If you what? want to name them off, you can. Who are the headaches? I, I'm not. I don't think of them as people. I think <laughs> of them as situations. <laughs> Mercer tried to put Trip in the corner there. Davis up tough here. Let's hope this is a, a bass. Seem to catch a little bit of everything. Davis Jr., one of our overachieving rookies for sure. Yep, drone. And another drone. Right now, it's the same generation, cubic feet per second yeah, that we put out earlier. Man. But you see just how a couple hundred yards down the river where Matt Heron is, there's some water movement, but it's not nothing like what it what it is at the base of the dam. Now, Davey, tell me. There's a well, like couple different line up like schools up there, maybe 50 different schools of spotted bass. The ones right at the dam, you're more susceptible to catch these, but they also could be by far the biggest ones that are near the dam. Yeah, and usually your most aggressive fish are, will be right at the base of the dam. Um, when they're somewhat lethargic, they'll just kind of settle in back, you know, 100 feet, maybe even 100 yards from the dam. Usually those most aggressive fish will be up there, right? Let's say first in the line at the dinner table. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of, a lot of bait lives there too. Trip pointed yeah. that out as, as well last time. Let's take a look at our leader right now and see where he's set up. And there's Brandon Polinick. Brandon, great morning. I uh, just wanted to check in with you real quick if you could sketch out sort of the way it's gone for you today. Yeah, I, I was really fortunate on how my morning went. I got to start where I wanted to, uh, which was super important. And, and was able to catch them fairly quick. Uh, I, I don't know that it, I don't think it's duplicatable or that I can duplicate it tomorrow. Uh, I just, just really fortunate things happen today. So Brandon, did the water level we see now, we weren't able to see you earlier today, but you seem to be fishing shallow water. Did, did the water coming up last night help you or did you expect to have the kind of day you've had? Uh, I knew the potential was there. I think it's helped push some new fish in, uh, which I assume helps everybody. Uh, you know, I think that was what made practice so hard was the water being down. Now, now it's just a matter of whether or not we can find the right, right one. Brandon, are you seeing a lot of fish today? Uh, obviously, you're catching a lot of them. Uh -huh. I've, I've seen a fair amount. I haven't seen a ton of fish. Uh, you know, I mean, I just, I got four to five, five and a half pounds. Uh, I just randomly was going down the bank and saw a three and a half pounder swimming out there and threw over there and caught it. You know, I've just I had one of those days where everything seems like it's gone right. We appreciate it for. Uh, I'm, I'm not just seeing them everywhere. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks. Thanks for the quick visit there. We're going to stay and watch for a little bit, uh, Brandon, but uh, good job today and congrats. Thank you. Here's how you get well in a, in a hurry. Gary Klaus was about 60th, the seven pounds, four ounces. He just caught a 5 four. He's in eighth place. Wow. Jumped good about six, 50 Gary. spots. So it's hard not to notice uh, Brandon Polnick's head on a swivel there. Did you? Oh, yeah. Was, That's why I asked him if he was seeing it. I don't know if a waltz was flying around the boat or what, but oh, I, I think it's maybe he's been looking at him pretty a lot this morning. Hard to duplicate it when you caught the one that you saw yes. and they're not, there's yeah. not one there, maybe. Marathon peak performance. Uh, a look at his day, David. 
Yeah, you look at uh, the thing that jumps out, because some of the guys we've had cameras with, they went till about nine o'clock before they put the first fishing boat. Brandon, like he said, got to start where he wanted to start, and uh, things got going for him early and often. Uh, three pounder at, at 807, and then uh, three eight at 848, and, and there's the big game changer. You've got to have, just like Sue mentioned, you, how far you go up the leaderboard, you catch a five pounder here on Lay Lake. He did that at 9.13 this morning. So Brandon Polnick, definitely our peak performance on terrific Thursday. And you see that fish number three, five and a half, like you said, that was when we checked in with him last time. He was just into the lead, 16 pounds. That was number five. That was the most recent catch. He has since culled twice, and they've been pretty substantial culls, being like his uh, third and second and third biggest fish of the day. Doing one of our patented Brandon to Brandon moves here as we go up for Brandon <laughs> Pollen. Very big, Brandon but Cobb. Please don't be swallowed. That's definitely an upgrade. Yeah, he's hooked kind of funny, but not really. I don't like how I hooked him. I don't have anything to. I think he's all right. It's like kind of the tongue, but not really the tongue. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's good. He's not bleeding at all. Be real careful with fish here. One mistake, one fish dying and not being able to cull the fish that you kept in the morning that was 12 a ounces bit. could really be rough on you. Cannon bear hooked up here. Looks a little bit good better. I don't know how good he's hooked. Sure. Oh, he's not that big. Well, the fish one pound even, that'll help. Ah. Help some. Five, six ounces maybe? Yep. Like that. Seven to ten spots in the standings probably. Yeah, it'll be you know, interesting in uh, tomorrow afternoon how much five or six ounces mm -hmm. will, will mean to a lot of these anglers. Ooh. It's like at Lake Murray, the difference, obviously higher weights, but the difference in 80th and 40th there was so, so slim, just a two pound deal. We see that the St. Lawrence, you're at 21 pounds and you're in 78th and 22 and a half is the cut line, 50, you know, 30 spots up. Love all the four boxes we've been able to have today. Good, yeah, we've good been, service on the Coosa River. Absolutely. A lot of that drum and stuff slapping it, but the bass feel the same way. I mentioned this a little earlier, but I can't stop thinking about it. Wow, that looked like a bass. Will Davis. Oh, why are they coming off? And Matt Herring, both Focus. having a lot of knowledge and both with very Focus different sharpest. game plans, both fishing up behind the Logan Martin Dam, but at different times of the day. Yeah. That's one of those deals, you know, Davey. It seems like you got guys committed to it for eight hours, I mean, no matter if the water's moving or not. And then there's some guys who just want to start there and be the first person to make a cast there. Meanwhile, some will come and sample it for just two hours, but it's during a certain generation schedule and they can get in and out. All come away with the same results. Look at that. Matt Heron, yeah, was up there early. And 10 pounds in the boat by a, in an hour, hour and change, and then was just had couldn't stand anywhere. Had to go somewhere else. Had, the, had the, the lure of the largemouth was too strong. For so you, it's funny, um, at Lake Murray, I was out on the water, and Lee Livesey was making a strong day. move. I guess it was day two. Two. Yeah, had gone from like 50 couple all the way up to yeah. second or third place. Yeah. So actually, I had to go find him. And there were fish schooling all around his boat, and he's like, I've caught 
30 here. I was like, this is great. And they were still, and he said, I know I need to go somewhere else. I know I need to go somewhere else. And I'm thinking, are you serious? They were groups we of 10 to 15 there. bass coming up, schooling around Pulling his boat. And he's saying, I need to go somewhere second. else. Leo. Is that your mind telling you that everybody else, as well as you're doing, everybody else yeah, is doing, doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and believe me, <laughs> everyone else is not doing yeah. the same thing. And if they're two pounder schooling all around you, you have to imagine there might be four pounder schooling somewhere else. And yeah. you feel like you're not gaining any traction, just catching the, the heck out of numbers, you know? But these weren't. You know, there oh, were some two pounders, oh, but there were sure. some mix in there yeah. that you could tell were ones no that would help him. And bass fishermen just love to run their boats as fast Absolutely. as they can go. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely a big part of it. There's a bass fisherman that likes to get his line stretched. He has Boy, been constantly out here and get him <laughs> working on a fish Probably since drawing. we picked up with him. He acts like no drum, though. You usually start telling the difference. Yep. Yeah. The way a drum fights compared to the doing that. bass. Yeah, even circle. in that current, yeah. <laughs> That's so gonna throw the pee out of boy. It's good that you kept up with the generation schedule and the about 10,000 cubic feet per second has been steady all day, but just like you said, where Matt Heron was sitting versus where Will Davis is, and he's hooked up again. Yeah, it just seems just like it's a way different more. area, and it looks like a, a whole different scenario. Mm -hmm. It's just closer to the dam, obviously. Current strongest where it begins and where it ends. Yeah. <laughs> They must be stacked about three levels deep down. If we have a drum power pole replay of that, he's definitely <laughs> my candidate. Look at the size yeah, of that drum. Stacked up like cordwood. Look at the size of that drum. <laughs> that sheep's head. <laughs> Dave, you catch a lot of those at the base of the Pickwick Dam uh, in your win? Absolutely. I've never seen somebody drum in my life. <laughs> you just have to have that mindset that you're going to have to do that. that that'll frustrate a lot of people and they'll just leave. Yeah, yeah, uh, I would think. But. That's just part of the process when you're in a tail race. There's going to be lots of bait. That's why there's lots of fish in different varieties. Will Davis not doesn't like the idle minutes. He likes to, he likes to have a fish on somewhere somehow. Obviously, but he's looking for obviously a big large mouth or a big spot where he's at. Good chance of him doing that. Hanging in there. Great day for the rookie. Fourth place. One of the favorites coming in here. Bernie Schultz veteran. What a great day he had. He's finished his work early. Brian New, Brandon Polinick on top. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. These anglers fishing all, at least the first fly, going to fish all the way to uh, 3 o'clock local time. 4 o'clock Eastern time. Shortly after that, the weigh-in commences. That'll be right here on Bassmaster.com. And the uh, following flights will fill in right behind. So big weigh-in today. Biggest one is tomorrow. We're going to decide who are the 50 that can remain here, keep fishing in this tournament. Very important. That will be the halfway point of our season when we finish that weigh-in tomorrow. Boy, that seems so odd that it's gone by so fast halfway oh the gosh, season. But then yeah. also Okeechobee seems like uh, yeah, 2021, like, maybe? Yeah, yeah, 2010. Yeah. <laughs> like right right after the pandemic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting mix in our top 10. We got to. He hit it going down. I mean, slack lined it. Some veterans like that man, Matt Heron, Steve Kennedy. Do what? Gary Klaus. Three sets of genarians. I'd, I'd, I'd add Brandon Polnick as, as a. He's one of the veterans of the Elite Series as it stands now. We got a rookie, a great rookie, a couple of good rookies, Logan yeah. Latuso and Will Davis. 
Yeah, yeah it's uh, a very diverse group there yeah. in that top ten. And then Bob Downey, he made the the top ten at Neely Henry on the Coosa River, even though he's from that. up in Wisconsin, the Minnesota region. Yeah. That's not a bass. I knew it was too big for a bass, but I had to drop on it anyways. Three sexagenarians. Schultz is 68. Gary Klaus is 63. Matt Heron is 60. Oh, what'd you call 60. <laughs> Somebody who's 60 years old, Ronnie, a sexagenarian. Tommy? Your you brain's working Stanford? overtime here, Ronnie. Huh? <laughs> I think your brain's working overtime here, Ronnie. No. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 70 is that septuagenarian. Is the <laughs> 70 is a septuagenarian. Yes, that's right. What's a 20 something year old? 20 year old. Okay. <laughs> a bivalve. 20 year old. <laughs> Bi <laughs> oh, a there's a lot of words a we could call a 20 year old. Thesaurus <laughs> genarian. Yeah. I was sitting there for a lot of words. Youngin. Worried about it. Pop. Punk. I don't know, pop you the guy that. out there somehow, though. Boy, Ronnie, you nailed it when you said the Alabama guys will be the haves and the have-nots. We got three in our top ten. Then Clint Davis is 74th, and look at some of these other guys. Joseph Webster, 78th. Straysner, 83rd. Wow. Kyle Welcher, 86th. Wes Logan, 88th. They got to get on it. And they all have registered fish, correct? Yes, They're not they just have registered fish. I think uh, that. Um, I think there's only like I will say this five to seven, five to what ten. What our guys without lack a in knowledge, tops? they make up for in heart. Oh, just that few. Ought to kill herself. And I guess that's just proof. Good Lord takes care of dummies. Because I've seen them run and stuff. I don't know how they got through there. Every time I've seen them run, I'm like, they ain't going to make it. Where in the world did this hurricane force wind come from? I was about to say that. East wind seems to be picking up more and more. I think they started pushing water, and that's where all the wind came from. They opened the. They opened the. That had to be the newer generators. The new, Those old generators yeah. won't push that much wind. That's a different kind of turbine. Sorry, a different kind of turbine. I imagine a little cell has popped up somewhere in the area. Yeah, it's that's sucking what it all looks the like. Air. We're gonna catch this big. Definitely what it looks like. We gotta catch us a big. So John Cox is so happy-go-lucky, nice uh, guy. Uh -huh. I think he catches them so often. It is very surprising to me to see him having such a slow day. You had to pick him in fantasy. I said it on the podcast. No one can sue me. I wasn't giving advice out on you know like the you know how they have to do the uh, the the warning for stocks and stuff. This is not an investment. Uh, Past performance is no yeah, guarantee yeah. of future. So I say that for yeah. my fantasy team, knowing that two of my five are most definitely cursed. No doubt. It doesn't matter. I could not pick somebody, and that not picked person would miss the cut too. Don't you worry. <laughs> so I had the pleasure to take uh, the Rapala Fantasy I've Fishing Champion from last year, fishing on Santee Cooper just a uh -huh. few weeks ago. Wow. Seems like every time they kill young one, lady's name, Aaron. Some kind of Ah. Exotic strain so comes back. Erin takes, takes its place. Told me that she definitely knew that she had beat the pants off Ronnie Moore. Whoa! <laughs> last year, I was much better than this year. Oh. You know, don't make me whip out my trade. Davy doesn't All know the trademark. All I know is I took Erin fishing. <laughs> well, like I told Zona, when Zona talked about the guy he took for Mercury Drain the Lake, I get paid to do fantasy fishing. They do it for fun. So we I ain't just, going far. You know, I don't know which one you want to choose. I think the prize package was almost like getting paid. That little move right there. What was it? All expenses paid trip, some baits, and some different gear, and then Davy Height. Yeah, that that might have been the the one thing that was a negative. But yeah, all expenses paid. <laughs> a rapper looked out for him, gave him uh, gave him a little money to spend while they were there. Gave him 
airline ticket from Dallas, Texas to yeah. did you, Columbia, South Carolina. Did you charge her for a guide trip? Is that the money that they well, gave Well, I can't go into that. Someone from the IRS might be listening. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's complicated. <laughs> Just make sure you didn't get Venmo or something. Here we yeah. go. David Gasson. It's like that fish will help him, I think. Definitely will. He is right on the 50 cut line as it stands before that fish came in. Let's see what he calls there. I think that's going to be a pretty good little help for him. Looking at the haves and have nots also, uh, I wonder if some of these anglers that I know love the sight fish, if they're after the fact going to go, gosh, I never even thought there'd be that many fish still up yeah. on the beds. Let me uh, get right here on your feet. Justin Atkins got well, filling his limit with a three pounder, moved up, up maybe 30 spots to 15. Atkins has history on the Coosa River. He won a Bassmaster Open at Logan Martin. And he did so, I believe it was in more of the heat of the summer. Mm. Might have been later May, early June, but I remember covering him on the water, sitting right in the middle of the river channel, one of the bends, you know, where the kind of current will stack up against some objects, whether it's rocks down there or whatever. Hump, maybe. Just a school, I mean, if he didn't catch 99 in a row, it, at oh, that spot. Really? I mean, it was mm -hmm. every cast on a shaky hit wow. for, for Atkins at Logan Martin. There's Jason Christie popping into the top uh, 15 at 13th. Jason Kirk, speaking of 15th, he's kind of tied right there, a bunch of them right in that area. It seems mm -hmm. to do so well to me to be so young and, and not having a lot of experience yeah. down south fishing. Absolutely. He's, uh, he's right there in the you know middle of the money or so, mm -hmm. like every time at yeah. least. I'll say this. I don't know what it is about Alabama, but Wisconsin and Minnesota anglers do so well in this state. Caleb Kufal winning at Gunnersville. He won a Bassmaster Open at Smith Lake. Bob Downey making top tens at Neely Henry. Jay Shakira doing so well. We see some guys do well at Pickwick as well. It's just, I don't know what it is about this state. We'll have to get maybe some breakdown from them at some point, you know. But hey, while we're on the topic of the haves and have nots, let's talk about my fantasy team. We'll bring it into the Bassmaster uh, <laughs> studio sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge. And for a wrap of Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, let's just cut straight to it. In the Bassmaster podcast with Kyle Jesse, I told him, hey, I have doomed at least two of my guys, maybe more, but the way the season has gone, it has been a little topsy-turvy. What you expect to happen at an event has not played out. Lake Seminole, for instance, did not necessarily play out sight fishing and that shallow water dominance like we expected. We saw the winner come from offshore. This week, we don't know if sight fishing's the deal, shad spawns the deal, current's the deal. Not quite sure it's up in the air, but currently, my only saving grace is this man, Will Davis, so I'm gonna talk about him right now because we got in the 80s for Straitsner and Lo uh, Lowen and Felix. Uh, Felix and Lowen might be in the 60s and 70s. John Cox just with two fish right now. The only thing I'll give John Cox slack on, he won a professional event over the weekend, got here probably a little late, missed some practice. I should have known better and removed him, but I still have faith. Like you said, if they got five pounds, Davey, they still could be in the hunt because we could flip the script tomorrow, sneak into that cut. We saw it last week, Hank Cherry, 83rd with nine pounds on day one, catches 22, catches 19, finishes the event in 13th place. I still have hope for my team. You know, and I kind of picked two local guys that are really good at the Coosa River, Josh Straisner, Will Davis. Will's paying off for sure this morning for me. I know Straisner's got some stuff up his sleeve. And then two guys that if they ignored the current and got back in a creek, maybe dialed in some water willow, it would be the John Cox and the Bill Lowen. And then I tried to ride the line with Austin Felix, somebody who might find that shaky head bite in the middle of the river, maybe find a current seam, something like that. Maybe that would be Austin Felix. He's a wizard with his electronics. Um, I still have some hope. 
Now, when we talk about drain the lake later, it'll be a lot better. So we'll have to keep that in store for the final final seg or two for the screen of knowledge. But yeah, Tommy, I don't game. want to hear about you, your you team. You and me wear the dunce cap of shame, Ronnie. Both Dude. of us have one guy who's in the top ten, and he's the shortest odds of the year. Yep. And yeah. that's Will Davis. Exactly. I mean, a $2 bet to pay you $2.15. Hey, I can't feel <laughs> super wise about it when everyone else picked him, too, you know? Uh. But like you said, Such, the haves and have-nots of the locals. We have 13 yeah. anglers from the Carolinians, or, or 13 Carolinians, and at Lake Murray, uh, three made the top ten, only five made the cut, and then five more missed the cut completely, and a couple of those were in the 90s hundred. It's going to happen. There's seven anglers that call the Coosa River home, and there's oh. going to be half of them that missed the cut probably, and the it other half may be in the chance to win. Who you pick, pitches. is that's the gamble you take. If it was as easy as just pick the local guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that easy. No. Kyle Jesse went all in and all eight of his Mercury Drain the Lake team, all from the Coosa River and Alabama guys. So we'll see how that plays out, picking, oh, yeah. picking all those. But if you also, if you level. didn't say, if you saved your smallmouth guys, you got to use your largemouth. You only have this one in Lay Lake left, or this one in I Sabine River left. Right. You better, you better spend them while you can. Stop. Let's roll. Yeah, the locals, I mean, first tournament of the year, Okeechobee, zero Floridians in the top ten yeah. on the final day. Oh, yeah. wow. So that's, that kind of shocks you. After but we had that's... two on top on day one, first and second. Exactly, exactly. Brandon Polnick still hanging in there on top. Bernie Schultz, Gary Klaus, another move from him. Gary Klaus, a man from Tennessee, making big moves on this day. Will Davis, Jamie Harton, Matt Heron hanging in there in the top ten. Still looking for just a little more than 10 pounds right now. Steve Kennedy, Logan Latuso, and old Bob Downey. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. About two hours till check-in time. Oh, man. Look at that. Nice catfish. Wow. Gary Klaus. <laughs> old big. Another guy who's getting his line stretched today. A lot of it with good keeper bass. He's currently in fourth place. That's from the boat, I believe, of Clint Davis. Got that shot. Big yeah, old that's flathead. That's yeah, the flathead. Good eating yes, there. Yes, sir. As Clint would say, that's a mega. <laughs> oh, they, the whole lake's full of them. I can't believe they're out here like this. I mean, I, I haven't even done this crap this week. Yesterday evening I pulled up here and I was like, okay, there's some out there. Gary is obviously having a good day. Absolutely. But he's the only angler that we've seen not up around the dam fishing offshore that's had a good day. Clint Dave, Davis has been doing this basically all day, yeah. somewhat similar, and only four fish. I'm interested to see if, if Gary made an adjustment, maybe catch, caught one on shad spawn, shallow, or a bed fish, and then slid off offshore testing some stuff. I wonder, like Matt Heron, if we saw him right now on docks, right, like I, said, I, I don't think see he did much. that all day, so I wonder, I wonder what his morning was. Because he's kind of been around yeah. that top 10. He has, this morning hour. he had three early, yeah. and then he yeah. kind of fell back, they but then he's have. made a move oh. about lunchtime. All right, Clint, where do you go catch a couple two-pounders? I mean, I, typically I'd know a million spots, but it ain't, woo, it ain't good. Klaus got a little bit of momentum going, a 22nd place finish at Santee Cooper a couple of weeks ago. Drum bite. 
Old drum daddy. All these anglers have things going on, but I just <laughs> known Gary a long time and we stay in touch. He's had a lot going on. Good to see him mm -hmm. to be able to keep on catching yeah. catching fish with a so busy. That's the hardest thing in the sport. We yes. talked about it was not getting in the bottom 20. That just crushes you when you don't yeah. get many points. He's got a, a top 50 at Okeechobee, got 48th. He was as high up as the top 20 there on the third day. He dropped down some with a tough day. Okeechobee was a 48th. You go to Seminole and get 95th. That's really tough. You go to Murray, get 101st. And then you go and get another top 20, too. He got 22nd, like you said, at Santee Cooper. That's two really solid finishes, but then you can't have yeah, two so bottom 10 finishes. So if he has another one here, he can be in that 50th place in points and kind of, yeah. you know, hope, hope a northern swing gets you in the classic because you're right there. Yep, old drum. All right, I'm about to get out of here pretty quick. Great example of that, Ronnie, is on uh, John Cox, who started the day seventh in AOI. He just caught his third fish. He's an 83rd. On the far right on the bass track, it tells you the uh, calculated place in AOI. He's fallen to 18th today with that type of finish. Hey, but all from I heard you say 18th? was from seventh wow. to 18th in AOI. He's day. 83rd in the event. He can still catch his limit and sure. gain a bunch of points. Sure. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear he caught his third. I want to hear that he could <laughs> catch a limit. I need that in suit to say some more of that. But it's like last year, uh, for instance, a nine event schedule, Jake Whitaker misses the classic by 45 points or something. And he had four top 20s and he had five, or four top 20s, uh, four bottom 20s and like a 50th, like one middle of the pack and four top 20s, four bottom and you miss the classic. Like it's, yeah. you just can't have those bottom 20s. Do it. Cobb could gain some serious points if the uh, standings stay similar. He's up in about 20th. Rivette, who's past Cook for second place, is 49th. So that'd be another 29 points if they were to hold through the event. All this wind and clouds and stuff going on right here. Boat traffic, it ought to stir these fish up enough to get them to bite. He is a mover and shaker when it comes to that retrieve there. Sure. <laughs> it's fast and that's the, I don't know if we name uh, retrieves, but that's the Coosa River yeah. swim jig sh yeah. shake right there is what that is. And boy, it's tiring on the forearm, oh, I can I tell can you that. Imagine. <laughs> and now we were talking during a commercial break, Tommy and I, and that's the benefits of that, Davey, is if you got a six foot stretch of, you know, from, from the shoreline to where the grass stops, if it's six feet wide, and you just do a straight retrieve, that's gonna take you three seconds to get out of the strike zone. You do the Alabama shake, you can keep it in there for 10, 10 right. seconds, you know, and it gives those fish more ability to find it with all of that other distraction in the way. And also, shad spawn, those things are flickering, it's erratic action, there's also a couple benefits to it, but. We got to talk in the Bassmaster podcast for the Pattern of the Month episode. We do, you know, at the beginning of each month, we talk to an Elite Series pro about how they think about this month and fishing and the schedule coming up or past events. And Wes Logan talked about it, and I asked him when he specifically winds a swim jig, when he puts a swim bait on there versus a craw, and then when he decides to just shake it, you know. And he kind of went into how he experiments on it. He'll He'll shake it, and if they come up and swat at it when he's about to reel it out, maybe I wind it. You know, he's, there's a couple oh, different man. ways to trial and error. Let's go back up to the man from Asheville, Alabama, Matt Heron.
I don't know if he will or he won't. As much as I know Matt Heron likes to pitch a jig, it's, it's got a Texas rig stick worm, a Senko or something like that. Kind of surprising to mm -hmm. see him pitching that. But I'm giving him a different look. I got an escapee in there somewhere. I'm struggling. It, uh, I'm gonna bounce around in here for just a second. I mean, I'm literally throwing everything I got at him trying to get one good fish. And uh, It's just been trying to speak up. Not as well I live here and I know so much about the place. I do. But for whatever reason, I just hadn't got it figured out this week. And I catch fish, you I mean, I, I catch them. But that just hasn't been the right Murray, like now. Brim bad bite there is phenomenal. Yeah. Weights, like it would have actually probably took less weight like throughout the field, but it would have took more weight to win. Okay. I can't see and I don't like it. We're live live? Uh, Just kind of fishing shallow, still trying to catch some of these late spawners, cruisers, stuff like that. But the clouds are really not helping my strategy. I've called a couple times, missed one or two, but I hadn't done anything spectacular. There are some big ones just kind of up, like, I don't know, I think they're kind of around brim, but like loose around the brim beds, and I need to be able to see them from far away, and I just, I can't with this clouds I'm kind of just the wacky worm seeing the best way to get them to bite so I'm kind of just throwing it but catching one here but nothing crazy definitely one thing I've learned fishing with Brandon Cobb a little in the off season is and you know that's the fall of the year when we were fishing some in real real early spring he, he's a sight fisherman and they don't necessarily have to be on the bed. He loves to get up in shallow water and just use his eyes to look for cruisers and, you know, wolf packs or he just, he really, really loves to just get up in shallow, clear water where he can see. Fish seem to like semi -relate to I think that's why he doesn't like the forward facing sonar as much because he, he wants to visually get up there shallow and see him with his, with his eyes. And his I polarized like a sunglasses. few of those big ones he caught at Hartwell when he won that tournament there, he was, he was, he, they were big ones, but he yeah. was looking, they weren't necessarily. On the bed. Yeah, but on the bed. Yeah, just yeah. up there. Yeah. And it ups your odds when you, time of the year, you know, you're doing a certain pattern, you're cruising. In the fall, you may see five. Yeah. And in the spring, you might see 25 yeah. during a day. And if you can, if you can catch a certain ratio of those, along with just fishing, then you can end up really being up there. And it's, it's part of what, surprises me about his struggles at times with a smallmouth up north because you can do that with them also. I mean, we yeah. see the Johnson brothers do it a, uh -huh. a lot. Uh, just, I mean, the water may be 12 or 14 feet deep, but you can still see those fish cruising oh, around. Yeah. And I haven't seen Brandon do that when we've been up there. 
We watch Will Davis kind of fishing that little seam right there. To you, Davey, would you rather be pitching from the slack side or from the current side if, if, if it's a specific seam you're catching them on? I like to be exactly like he is in there on the slack side. Um, if you don't get a bite, then you can just move the boat over. But um, I think your, your bait looks very, very natural coming from the current into that seam mm. uh, uh, rather than coming out of the current yeah, into yeah. the seam. Yeah. That looks very, very similar to where Jay Ellis mm -hmm. caught a few of his fish. I'm pretty sure that is the yeah, yeah, same little I'll, spot. I'll yeah. say this. I covered a college team who is the first time I heard Will Davis's name, but I kind of got my introduction to there because, you know, back in the day, you get clued in by a guy or a guy you knew that lived here had already taught you something mm -hmm. prior to coming to the – so this is a Will Davis spot, and it's a – it was a place like this, right on the current flow. Got up here to the dam trying to catch a uh, couple spotted bass. Caught one good one, and uh, the only bite we had actually was like the first cast we made it up here. And I just turned on two turbines, so get about another hour. They should position like they should. Up here drifting the old Davis shaky fish around, hoping to want a bite. I got three good ones and two I got to get rid of. Got 70 limits on the day. We had 72 on day one at Santee Cooper. Of course, the big fish at Santee, we had more than 70 over four pounds. Today, we have eight hmm. over four pounds. I kind of like these tournaments when four pounders mean a whole lot oh, more yeah. than they do elsewhere. Yeah. You know that it might be do or die or dire fishing, but you catch a four pounder, Tommy, you feel like, man, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I have a shot now, not I need five four pounders. It has to be in your strategy to, to target a four plus pound fish. Yeah. Somehow, yeah. switch up what you're doing to do they, that every day. They live here, that, yep. that's for sure. You can, you can fix yourself up real quick, a couple of those course of a day. Brandon Polnick hanging in there on top. He's kind of got that situation going. Brian New. Bernie Schultz. Bernie Schultz, another great tournament for him. Gary Klaus moving up the leaderboard. Will Davis, Jamie Hartman, Matt Heron, Steve Kennedy, Logan Latuso, another rookie in our 10, and Bob Downey. We'll be right back to Lay Lake in just a minute. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Whataburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Skeeter Boats. First of four days of fishing we're going to experience here and have been experiencing this morning on Lay Lake on the Coosa River. Famous Coosa River here in Alabama. Flows out of North Georgia. He was ready though. All the way she... down to join with the Tallapoosa and make the Alabama River. We have seen some good yeah. fish catching today. We, we absolutely, absolutely have. Absolutely have. And it's been a lot of variety. We talked about that this morning. I'm looking forward to this event. Maybe not the weights, the heavy weights that we have seen the last few Good events boy. at Lake Murray and Santee no, Cooper Lakes, but it. a lot of variety. It's always fun to see the Alabama spotted bass mixed in with these Man, in this equation for cool. these anglers. Yeah. And, you know, from a little side fishing to shad spawn action, punching, swimming the jigs, current uh, yeah. up around the back of Logan Martin Dam, a lot of different things going yeah. on. Three pounder just boiled on it. They're just, uh, I have not had the bites. That was a three pounder just boiled on it. And they come up behind it like when he had the mouth closed or something. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I went and caught a few fish, but there just, there was no size. The, the good fish, like, there's good fish in the grass, and I can't understand why they won't bite. I mean, that fish right there was a three pounder. He just followed it up, turned and went back down real in slow motion. I mean, you gotta be able to figure out how to catch that fish. I mean, I, I mean wind, everything sets up for the swim kick, but they're just not eating. 
talking about the current schedule and Will Davis up near the Logan Martin at the base of that dam said that he felt that the second turbine was turned on. I haven't seen it online okay. say that there's an uptick in cubic feet per second getting moved out of there. Still around 10.5, what it's been, 10,500. Now I look at the Lay Lake Dam, what they're sending out of Lay down to the bottom, which affects, from what I've heard, from around the place that they call the Narrows, you know, right below, mm. I think, Spring Creek, it's the Narrows, oh. and then and then it There's gets down to Waxahachie and Paint Creek. They've doubled. They put four turbines on and it's at 21,300 and change. So the people who are actually maybe could catch them based on current could be some of those lower lake guys hmm. before they make their run back. Wow. And, and the rest the of the grass. week, and it's, it's a lot more turbines being ran at lay and a lot more possible I mean, opportunities of water movement compared to up top. Out, but They're going to shut it off this weekend at Logan, looks like. That I've caught a lot of big fish in, and that's where then our next stop we're going there. We're out of here. We talk about forward facing sonar every event now. It's just it's drink, part of the equation. It's surprising to see Clint Davis has been looking at his forward facing sonar. It, all day. Yep. And I'm afraid he spent a little too much time looking at fish that just do not want to eat. And, and uh -huh. I see that being out on the water at the events. You know, we normally have cameras on guys that are catching them, but there's also a lot of people that are using forward facing sonar that are not catching them. No doubt. We all, the fans online think it's an end all be all at times and that the top performers are always using it. If we, even if we see flares and, and glimpses of it, but there are just as many people missing the cut that were reliant yep. on it. And mm -hmm. this one and the next one, Davey, seems like it, a lot more fishing tournament, if we, if we had to describe the tournament. It's a lot more fishing than it is looking with your electronics, yep. and you can yep. shut them off and, and be able to still be competent on those bodies of water. I can see how you could stay stuck on a place for way too long if you're seeing a yep. bunch of big fish on your screen. And it's hard not to. Yeah, yeah. Especially like Clint Davis, is a, it could most likely be a place where he's caught them really good before and you see them sitting there forward facing and you think well i just got to figure out what they want to bite because they all have it for the most part john cox no fritz no funny at lake murray i saw david fritz come into the Boat dock, but he's but got a flasher. That's the last another game. That's, that's, that's game where I was changer. going there. That's a game changer. The last practice day, <laughs> I was out on the water and I saw him coming into the dock a little early for, you know, going in to rig your tackle. Uh -huh. But he wasn't. He's going to service crew because his uh, his graphs had stopped working for whatever reason. But he said, "Thank goodness I've got my trusty old flashers. And they've been working, or I'd have been." Down in the, you know, down and out without anything if I, my flashers hadn't helped me through the day. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Flasher tells you a pretty good return idea of when it's, you know, a high spot or something like that. Most of the time when I'm running along and you, the flasher would help you, I would already hit the object that the flasher's about <laughs> to tell you about. That's, that would be my luck, is, especially at a place like Santee Cooper. It'd be good to get your, did that play out kind of the way you thought? Moultrie was kind of a, a big factor early in the event. At least a couple of our high finishers came from Moultrie and then the water kind of got plugged as scheduled or pulled the plug as scheduled and that died off. And did you see the area that it was won at by Palmer kind of being the deal? Yes, I did. It, it surprised me he caught him as well as it did, but he, he was able to use his forward facing sonar to, to really locate a few of those bigger fish on trees that it took him at times 20 or 30 casts to get them to bite. But it, uh, the margin of victory surprised me where he won and him even being the winner last year, you know, finishing third wasn't surprising. I thought the tournament would be won in Moultrie if they didn't drop the lake because that's where it had been really uh, good um, the couple weeks prior to that. Um, it's just so finicky. It oh, seems, it's so finicky because it's so, so flat. You know, don't have a lot of depth there, and a lot of those fish when they're up on that the area where Matt Robertson led day one and two is 
historically known for the water dropping just a few inches and those fish are just they're I don't not, think they stop biting. I think they leave. They just oh, they yeah. Five thousand acre of basically three feet of water, with lots of stumps and now lots of eelgrass. It's a great place, but very sensitive to water level changes. Were you on board with all the eelgrass talk that that place is going to really absolutely. be absolutely ginning up in the next few years? But I also think, and we talked about it a little bit. Um, I think that's what kind of hurt the fishing a little bit right now because when you when you first have all that vegetation, it spreads fish out so much, and it's just hard oh, to yeah, yeah. find those edges and clumps as that stuff is just growing so fast. Um, and it just spreads those fish out instead of just being on trees. Some are on eelgrass, some are on trees, some are on other types of vegetation. Oh, I don't but know, you give buddy, it a few years, you'll, and the population will, it will deep. fill it in, yeah. But I can't grow, get really, really there. grow tremendously. And I think it's great because I was a little concerned about the population on the Santee Cooper Lakes the last right. few years. Didn't see many 10 to 12, 13 inch fish being caught. Yeah. I'm sure y'all noticed that on the, yeah. you know, watching oh, yeah. from here. There didn't see many one pounders caught in that event. No. Davis hooked up. Feels like a catfish, man. I'm dead serious. I told you it is. Feels like catfish. Sums up my day. Catfish in a brush pile on a shaky head. Get over here. What are you doing there, dude? So where have I thrown all my pliers at today? We've been running around. There you go, Luke. Oh, slime your line. <laughs> is almost really boring. Paul Mueller just pulled into the top 10 in 10th place, about 12 and a half pounds. His bass track shows him at 60th in AOI with a 10th place finish. Two events ago, he was 99th. So he's got to make a little run to get inside the- Who was this again? Paul Mueller, Mueller was Mueller, 99th yes. before sixth place at Santee and now if he it's another good finish here and make a nice little run to get classic qualified and stay We talked about qualified. this last yeah. year, or we talked about it this year and last year, Such. Uh, I think Austin Felix was like 76th after Chickamauga, after four events of the elite season, and was able to jump in and make the classic by the time the last event came around. He did win one at Oahe, which helps. Such, how far do you think is too far looking at the AOI coming in? You, you, you had some guys keyed up because there was, I think Taku was in the 70s. There were several He's guys have the northern in there. swing, but you know, that's hard to count on sometimes. You know, Christie was 61st, Lester 67th, and Lester's not doing so hot today mm. yet. But he grows 76th, Ronnie. So after this event, 70th and below, too far size. to make the class. Bass. I think that in years past, I'm you not had saying. a lot more elite winners win opens, but with so many more anglers in it to win it for all nine oh, events. Man. You're gonna have less of those guys who didn't fish the full schedule, or less of those elite fish. guys that fished a division. You know, possibly they're outnumbered, and so I, I don't think that that opens winner is gonna get distributed back to the elites as much. And it might be closer to 40 than it is 45. Mm. And 70. If you're a smallmouth guy, it's doable. If you're a largemouth guy that hasn't had the best track record, smallmouth. Ooh, these next two are huge. You know. It also depends if 70 is 40 points back or if it's 120 points back. You know, I, I gotta look at that. Because currently, right now, John Cruz is 70th with 221. 40th is 296. So 70 something points is very manageable, but if you're in 70th after the Sabine, yeah. three events yeah. left. Take, you, yeah. Each event is taken away. Yeah, you lose a lot it more, more difficult. Chance. Canterbury sitting in 60th place right now. It's good season though, 28th. Thank you your points. Better fish here. No, right. a lot. Oh yeah. That's what they're supposed to do right there. 
Lay Lake Bass supposed to eat a swim jig. Maybe it's just a color thing. That's the kind we gotta have. We need five of them though. It's the one we talked about all morning. Yeah. Said he had a lot of time to get it, and he that took helped. up a lot of that time, but good to see him get that. Now, guys, I think that that's the quality and the size fish we need to do, you know, for a replay of the day. I think that that's more what, like What it. makes you think they're going to be considered, oh, oh, wait Oh, a minute. there we go. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to jump the, I'm going to jump the horse and tear yeah, hard tears on that one. I hear that music. Yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie Moore. That's what they're away? supposed to do right there. This is the this is the Coosa River. Welcome to Lay Lake. We saw some swim jig fish this morning by David Gaston and Scott Canterbury said I was in the right areas, but I missed out on that shad spawn swim jig bite. Afternoon delight though for Scott Canterbury, his best fish of the day, coming on a technique that we know was gonna be a factor at Lay Lake. So that's gotta be power pole replay of the day of the afternoon. And the sentence of the day, that's what they supposed to do. That's yeah, what that's they right. supposed that's to do. That's what they supposed to do. <laughs> He's gonna net about two pounds out of that, yeah. at least out of that one, and that is gonna move him way up above his 60th spot he was in before he got hooked up with that one. Brandon Polinick still on top though with new Schultz, Klaus, and Davis making out the top five. Jamie Hartman, Matt Heron, Steve Kennedy, Logan Latuso, and Paul Mueller now joins the fray in the top 10. The Waterburger Bassmaster Elite at Lay Lake is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here, day one at Lay Lake on the Coosa River as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge, and, and we do this. Day one, we pick our cameras of who we think could do well, tell the story. Day two on, we cover the leaders and the top performers. That's why on day one, I tell you all about my fantasy team, whether they're good or bad. We'll talk about the guys and the best teams tomorrow going forward, but that brings me to Mercury Drain the Lake. This has been my better game mode. Of the two game modes we've had, I've been much more successful at this and the way Tommy Sanders and Mike Sukon and myself all do it we plan out our whole team before the first cast of the season and allocate those anglers to the lakes and then when it comes time whether the conditions have changed we still stick to it for the most part and this was before the season started my eight-man lineup for Mercury Drain the Lake I picked a couple locals I had used Will Davis and David Gaston at Santee Cooper and Lake Okeechobee I'd used them because I knew I wasn't going to use all the locals here I did use Matt Heron he's paying off big time in the top 10 I used Clint Davis not so hot today. We'll see if he can maybe pull some history and uh, be able to move up the leaderboard. Scott Canterbury, that fish catch last segment, a huge help for my team and everyone else who picked him for Drain the Lake. Uh, and then we've got some other wild cards in here. I wish I would have used Luke Palmer last week, but yeah, he, he comes coming off a win. Hopefully this would be his style as well. He's below the cut line right now. Caleb Summerall is having a good day one so far. After the first hour of the morning, Caleb, uh, Carl Jockinson was in the top five at leading at one point. I think he caught a couple maybe on the shad spawn early. That has died off. He is now below the cut line. Just barely. We'll see if he can move up. And then the last two guys, I thought maybe if this was a grinder, Larry Nixon would do well in it. Uh, he's pretty low on the leaderboard at this moment. But the one guy that I wanted to praise is Matt Airy. If you don't know much about Matt Airy, his couple years on the Elite Series since 2019 and on, he has gotten, if we fished around the month of May or the first week of June, he has gotten a top 15 every single time we've done it. Whether it's Lake Eufaula in, in Alabama, he was just outside, or he was in the top 10 there. Whether it was Pickwick last year just outside the top 10. Neely Henry here in May, he got a top 10. Matt Airy is a top 10 machine around the month of May. If it's May or the first week of June, you need to have Matt Airy on one of your teams. I should have put Matt Airy on my Rapala team as well in bucket mm. A. Not paying off for there, but for Mercury Drain the Lake, I made a wise decision back in January, Davey, but my decisions the week of the tournament, not so good. Before the season, much better. I, I do much it. better right after the tournament's over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's very that's hard to beat. That is so hard Don't worry, to when I show you the perfect <laughs> team on Sunday, that was the team I almost picked, right. I promise. Scott Canterbury, we saw him catch a good one. This catch right here, as a matter of fact, just a few minutes ago. He was in 60th place. Now that one ate it. Nice. 
Really Very frustrating we... day to this point. That's what they're supposed to do right there. Lay like my ass supposed to eat a swim jig. Good to see you made a color change. Uh, maybe maybe that is a different thing. That's the kind we gotta have. We need five of them though. Well, Scott has got at least an hour fishing time. Yeah, I mean, finally got one to commit. Changed up uh, color. I don't know if it's a color thing and I didn't do it quick enough or I'm hoping, but I had a, you know, I had a three pounder or something come up and look at my jig over there and I just went to a straight green pumpkin. A little smaller jig, a little finesse jig too. They just ha had so much pressure. Maybe that's a key deal, so. I got one good one, come up and get it. Um, I mean, he ate it like they're supposed to. They're supposed to eat it like that. And it's been a, it's been a super, super tough deal to get them to commit. But, uh, I mean, this is not ideal time of day for it now, and he ate it good, so hopefully he can get another one or two. I need a couple more. These fish are in the grass. I mean, it's so hard to get them to bite. There's so much shad in the mornings, and they feed at night so good right now with that shad spawn. It's just hard to get them to eat the bait, and... Maybe we can talk another one into biting here in a minute. Tommy, we talked about the direction that you make your cast and the current and when we were up uh, yeah. on Will Davis, closer to the, to the dam there. You see Canterbury moving out a little bit now, but just a minute ago, uh, you could see he was, you see those circles of vegetation on these humps and some of even yeah, some of these yeah. points and they create almost like a donut where you have an outside line of vegetation then you'll have some in and uh, m most of the time most anglers are on the outside casting in but uh, he's paralleling now but a few minutes ago Scott Canterbury which has a lot of experience yeah. swimming a jig on the Coosa River was on that inside he was, casting he was, that in is, yeah, yeah that's where he caught that big fish giving him a different look yeah I rode back on media day when the classic was here in 02, 2002 with Larry Nixon on that day. And that's all he talked about was where are they inside the donut? Are they outside the donut? And he spent his whole time trying to figure that out. And he wound up he top five in that tournament. Well, you well, need to tell yeah. him it's outside the donut so my fantasy <laughs> team can be better. You Come know, on, Tommy. I, I will say, Davey, he was down in Waxahachie. That's where we saw Canterbury earlier. I haven't seen a map. I could look, you know, private right now, but I haven't looked at one lately. With them generating so much more water out of lay into, um, uh, what is it, Mitchell? With them moving more water, the tendency for that lower lake to drop a couple inches m much quicker than Come maybe on. the water coming in affects the Come water height. On. That outer edge, that may be the huge reason why. Yep. You know, he's finally in a part of the lake that's now acting a certain way with the water <sighs> dropping. What a grind. You mentioned, uh, I know jokingly, about your fantasy fishing and, and Larry Nixon, but also to what you said, Tommy, uh, Nixon trying to decide, to me, one of the, you know, fishing with those great, I mean, I grew up reading and dreaming to, to meet Larry Nixon, yeah. but once I got to know those great fishermen of the sport, uh, that's something that I think he was so, so high, good at, so and boy, you would always hear him talking fish. about, not if they're yeah. in the grass, where they are in the grass, exactly. so relating yeah. to oh, yeah. suspended just off the inside or outside edge. Or, uh, it was always about knowing exactly where those fish were. And Larry Nixon was the best in the business. <laughs> you, you watch him work over a place like Big Harris yes. Lake and stuff like that. It's exactly that, what he's And it's all about being yeah. efficient with your time and where you've got your bait. If yeah. you put your bait where those fish are, rather than three-fourths of the cast, you're not around a fish and one-fourth you are. It's just all about, mm. you know, percentages and that sort of thing, but yeah, that's great you mentioned that about Larry because he, so he always still down. It's still had a pattern within a pattern, so to speak. Yeah, to something else a new going leader, on. Brian New. Whoa. Wow. Four pounder, he's up to uh, 18 pounds, 13 ounces. He just called twice in the last 15 minutes. 
crib. We'll be with him tomorrow. We'll see what he's doing. Yes, That'll yes. Be fun. I was just thinking that. What's your thoughts, Ronnie? What would you think Brian New would be doing, knowing his styles and his? I think he's gone to both dams twice with how much he likes to run around. You know, uh, <laughs> he's a, he's one that ran around on Murray as much as uh, yeah, much as. Uh, I'll I'll make that guess, Davey. His five plus pounder, his big fish of the day. I bet it came on top water. I'll say that, and then I could see him mixing in some of that on, schooling man. fish, you know, not on the bank, but not deep, you know, on the main river, somewhere in there. I could see that mixing in. Doesn't look like he's gone far today, really. To tell I was going to say, he probably learned catches. from his <laughs> hundred and whatever miles <laughs> uh, bike, around and yeah, around on Lake Murray, maybe down. just not run around as much. Yeah, by the looks of the water, tomorrow may be the best day or the last day that water generation out of Logan Martin may be an important factor. Doesn't look like, looks like I saw a lot of ones and zeros on Saturday. They don't have Sunday's forecast projection yet. That can always well, change. Well, hold on. They want to get on the dock with the fish line. There's ones and twos today and tomorrow, ones and zeros. Oh, God, that's the only way I can get about um, On Saturday. Hmm. At least today, anyway. I have no idea how electric demand run, uh, drives. It's the same thing on the Tennessee River. We drives, see that, yeah. Drives that sort of thing. You know, it's going to be 90 degrees on Sunday, so no. May, there may be a, an order for some more generate. You know, I don't how know. much can they? If they I, generate I a bunch today and tomorrow, do they? Can they? That's a brand is new it saved in a surplus to use on the weekend. That's why they don't have to generate. Who knows? Could be, I don't yeah. think they have a lot of saving capacity, but I also think the amount of the total percentage of power used in these areas uh, being generated from these dams is so, so small. Yeah, it's not It's not a big percentage right. of it. Yeah, it's not a make or break deal. Right. It's just the, what is it, the lights and the AC in the house that they're pulling from or using it for? Snow cone machines. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Soft serve. Jason Christie called. He's up to sixth place. They got the old pounds. pontoon or whatever that is. I, say, I know it was still tied fishing up. boat. And the new pontoon. They even got them a beach, man. Somewhere on the beach, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll mention that uh, Mueller is in the box right around there. the top ten. He uh, almost won that Neely Henry event. Caught that seven pounder on the final mm -hmm. day and came up just short of West Logan, but he knows his way around. Oddly, I have no idea how to get a gauge on Paul Mueller. What he's, I know what he's good at, but where where it actually factors, he wins it's at the St. John's. It's such a different. I mean, how different is Lanier from St. John's River? Yes. Yes. And then that tells doing, you all you the, need to know, right? doing yeah. the yeah. offshore deal at Moultrie, and then his northern experience obviously comes, you know, speaks for itself. But then yeah. doing well in the Coosa River, that doesn't make Still, any sense. Still, uh, you know. we no, trying, really boys. We digging. It's the bottom of the ninth, and I'm out of gas, and I'm throwing every kind of junk curveball out of my gut. Good to see him back on the right track, though, catching him really well right. last event and this one. Yeah. Getting close to the end of our uh, live coverage time here at Bassmaster.com. Well, we have, we have had some good, good interludes of fish catching today. Yeah, we heard a lot of folks uh, saying how tough it was going to be, and you look down Bass Track, you can see it. It had been tough for some anglers, but we've seen a lot of fish catching and didn't expect to see all eight pounders. It's all relative. This tournament is going to be a big, big uh, game changer for some of these anglers that maybe were struggling. We've seen uh, doing well here today. Some of our Alabama anglers have stepped up big time. Some of them have struggled today. Uh, we've had uh, Scott Canterbury do a little of both. Really yeah. stepping up late today, moving from 60th yeah, to 38th place, and he's got some time left in his day. 
Don't forget that uh, that first flight will check in at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 3 Central, 3 local time. And shortly thereafter, they will begin to weigh in. Dave Mercer will take charge and we'll go through the 104 on this day one. Day one weigh in in the hot seat. Well, now it's actually going to be Brian New in that hot seat. So we will see you tomorrow right here at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central.